All right, it is time for another update and forecast on the various wildfires going on in Northern California. And I hate to say it, but this is not going to be one of those videos where we have a lot of good news. Quite the contrary, as you can see on the satellite imagery, the fires have absolutely exploded over the last couple of hours. I usually don't use words like exploded or anything too extreme like that, but you can see the situation, especially on the Dixie fire right now. And before I usually go into the acreage burn, the containment, the resources, and then the fire weather forecast. But before we do that, I'm going to break out of our usual pattern for these videos. And what we are going to do is actually look directly at some of the evacuation orders because there are some new ones in effect as of right now. And the, these, like I said, are it's a developing situation as of right now with that increase in fire activity that we've had this afternoon. So I'm just briefly going to show where all those new evacuation orders are. Key one that I noticed on this list is Janesville west of Highway 395 from Janesville grade south to Milford grade. So Janesville is an area that we've been talking about for, I don't know, maybe five or six days. We've been looking at the Janesville area, worried that the fire might re might go up into that area. And as we are seeing right now, it looks like the situation has pr progressed in a negative direction. And we do now have some evacuation warnings there. Now, I also put the link to this map in the description of this video. You can see where those evacuation warnings reach. Don't believe there's a, an official warning in Susanville yet, but it looks like it's right up to the edge. And when it comes to my personal opinion, when it comes to evacuation orders, I, I don't think you should technically wait until you're officially under a warning. I think in situations like this, even if you're not under a warning yet, if your gut's telling you to get out, then that's exactly what you should do. And... You, you never know. Sometimes the internet goes out. Sometimes those emergency systems don't work as well as they're supposed to. So if you feel that you should get out and you haven't gotten an official order yet, I would always just say to follow your gut when it comes to that kind of information. But as you can see, there are a large number of places that are now in that evacuation order over the last, I think that was one hour ago that they just sent that out. Yeah, it was one hour ago. You can see this list of all the new places that are under the evacuation order. So be sure to check out the CAL FIRE website, the Facebook. The three ones I go to on Facebook are CAL FIRE Lassen Modoc Unit, CAL FIRE Butte County, and Plumas County Sheriff's Office. They all have great resources. Then you can also get this evacuation map in the link in the description. One place that sometimes does have some very up-to-date weather information is Twitter. You just have to make sure you follow the right accounts. Good ones to follow are Jonathan Cox, CA Fire Scanner, Zeke Lunder, all good accounts there. And then the one other great thing you can do if you're looking for wildfire information, go to insaweb.com. Again, doing switching it up how we usually do these videos because this is one of those nights where it's important to make sure people know where to get the most recent information because as you could see on that satellite imagery, we do have that developing situation right now where things look like they could continue getting even more serious throughout the night tonight, at least just based on how much fire behavior we have. So again, what I was about to show is you can go to InsuWeb, go to whatever fire you're interested. In this case, we'll go to the Dixie fire and then they have large amounts of information that you can read about, but I think the best part of this website is the very bottom here. It says related links. And you can just see there's, well, maybe 20 different links there where you can go and get a large amount of information covering the Dixie fire. So I am going to try to do a better job of reading the live chat throughout the course of this video than I usually do, because again, this is going to be one of those videos that is very interactive. I'm going to be counting on you guys to be sending in some information on your end when you get some recent information and then I'll do everything I can on my end to 
try to go to the best resources I know of and then be the medium of that information. Just because, as I said, this is a developing situation as of right now. So we're going to have to stay on top of it over the next few hours. That's one thing that we have been seeing with the Dixie Fire over the last week is normally wildfires peak at about 4 p.m. in the afternoon, but with the Dixie Fire over the last week, it almost seems like we're peaking at 7 p.m. and then we're seeing that fire activity increase even into the overnight hours. At some points at 12 p.m. at night, we still have some extreme fire behavior. So this is most likely going to be a very long live stream today because, because of this developing situation as of right now. And looking at the live chat, it looks like people are saying all of Janesville is under the evacuation order now. You can see that back on this map. There's that evacuation order. I'll just make sure to keep updating this because we most likely will continue to see changes on this evacuation map. If we zoom in there, you can see it's is it does look like it's starting to stretch up into Susanville as of right now. And then you can see Janesville and Buntingville right there, officially in that evacuation order. And I'm curious if you click on this, if it tells you, evacuation order, immediate threat to life. This is a lawful order to leave now. The area is lawfully closed to public access. So no more information there. Fire and police info. And then it has the different counties that are under it. So again, you can find all of that information in the link in the description. I'll just keep looking at the live chat. Yeah, code red evacuation warning system is not working correctly. And they are resorting to a reverse 911 system to try to warn people. So that kind of ties back into what I was saying earlier. Like right now, it looks like the evacuation orders start to stretch into Susanville, but not all the way. And that is where I, again, always trust your local authorities more than anybody giving you advice on the internet. But when it comes to at least my opinion, I live in very high fire danger area. And I personally don't wait for any evacuation orders. If I get one, guaranteed I leave. But I also don't wait to get one. If I start getting that feeling in my gut that things aren't good, I just pack up and leave and don't, don't, there's really not a reason to risk it if you get that feeling in your gut that it might not be a good situation over the next few hours. And when we look at the fire weather forecast, you can see that we are going to have very poor humidity recoveries throughout the overnight hours, which means it's going to be dry overnight which means that this fire will most likely continue to see active behavior over the next few hours. And just based on how fast these smoke plumes are going, you can tell that what we were talking about in the forecast yesterday with those high winds coming in at about 35 miles per hour is exactly what we saw throughout the day today. And as of right now, whenever you, whenever you see the smoke blowing that fast, you know, there's some strong winds in the area and, that is part of the reason that we're seeing such active behavior as of right now. Yeah, so somebody said, if you were within five miles of this fire, I would evacuate. I'd say that's pretty pretty safe to say there. <clears throat> See somebody from the Burnt Ranch area? It sounds like they're behind a containment line, so that's some great news there. We were looking at the Burnt Ranch area yesterday, and it looked like that situation on the monument fire was starting to get a bit sketchy so good to hear that you are in a good situation <clears throat> yeah coming over the ridge above janesville as we speak all hell has broken loose and one other thing we can do to actually see some of this activity looks we'll wait for it to spin around here because i was looking at this camera earlier and you could actually see some of the activity but this is more usually more pointed in this direction where we see the areas up above like the Westwood type area or the Chester type area but we'll see if it spins around if we can start to see some of that activity that's happening on the northeastern section of the fire so the spot fire outside Janesville on Thompson Peak Blew up tonight and scanner reporting the fire is now over the ridge 
and heading down to Janesville. Yeah, so and then somebody commented on the satellite images. This always takes a little while to turn back around, so we'll take another look at that satellite image. One thing that's always useful to do is, one, we can zoom in here. You can see that we started off this morning, still had some moderate behavior, but then as those winds picked up throughout this afternoon, fire activity is about as intense as we've seen it quite possibly on the Dixie Fire. And we've been following this for maybe three weeks as of right now. And that plume coming off of the northwestern section of the Dixie Fire is about as intense as we've, I think as we've seen on the Dixie Fire. Looks like McFarland Monument River Complex and Antelope also seeing a large amount of activity. We will check out the Monument Fire at some point because it does look like there's a large pyrocumulus coming off of that eastern section, and we were looking at that yesterday. But, again, the key area is going to be that Dixie Fire area because looking at their Facebook page, you can see all kinds of new evacuation orders in place, including Janesville, which apparently they're doing reverse 911 calls as of right now. And looking at the evacuation map, you can see stretching all the way up through Janesville, Buntingville, and starting to push into Susanville as well. And somebody said there's some activity on the Dire Mountain 1 camera. So let's check it out. Like I said, this update and forecast today is going to be a lot more interactive than usual because it's going to be important to stay up to date on all the most recent information going on. So Dire Mountain 1, let's check it out. <clears throat> yeah, you can see large amount of activity biggest thing I notice is how fast that smoke is moving there. Again, of course it looks fast because it's a time lapse, but we usually see some of that smoke just going straight up into the air like that, like what it was doing earlier in the day. But then as those winds have picked up, it's almost, the winds have almost been so fast that it's not allowing that smoke to go up as high. It's just blowing it directly horizontal. And then I also see alert cam Hamilton Mountain 1. So let's check that one out as well. Wow, look at the orange skies from Hayfork Divide. Hayfork Divide 2 can guarantee that those areas are right underneath the smoke plume. That's usually what the case is when you see those orange images like that. Yeah, so seeing a lot of activity on this one. And has best view of fire coming over the ridge. That looks like the ridge right there. And there were a few cases here where you could actually see the flames. One thing you also notice, it almost seems like it's going back and forth between like late evening hours and afternoon hours. And that's just because the smoke is so thick that you get those instances where it almost seems like you're transitioning into nighttime. So I think we are definitely going to have to keep an eye on this camera throughout the course of this entire live stream. Oh, this is a good point that somebody put in the live chat. The Cal Fire Dixie Fire evening update for tonight is not going to be giving in person due to them focused on current situation and is just going to be a pre-recorded message at 8 p.m. So if we look at this, I think they actually did a post about that somewhere in here. You can see all the evacuation orders that have come through over the last hour or two. So due to the red flag warning, that was the big story we were talking about yesterday, the challenging conditions that were coming into the Dixie Fire with the warm temperatures, the low relative humidity, but most importantly, those strong wind gusts. They surprisingly didn't have a red flag warning over it yesterday, 
but if we look at where the fire perimeter is right now and then turn on the weather watches you can see that the red flag warning almost splits the Dixie fire half of it is in that fire weather watch and then the other half is in that red flag warning and it's exactly the half of the Dixie fire that we wouldn't want to be in that red flag warning where we see the most where you see the largest amount of hotspots is under that red flag warning that's no coincidence it's because of that extreme winds in the very dry air throughout the day today which is why we're seeing so much activity on that northeastern edge so just read this looks like it's they're actually showing this for 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Tuesday so that's actually I would say some bad news because we're seeing a lot of activity on it right now and what they're saying is we're not technically even in the red flag warning conditions yet which means that right now they're predicting that conditions are going to be even more critical tomorrow so I think big thing to do here is look at the live hotspots so somebody said Hayfork is okay too but the fire has been moving in that direction as well Um, so here are the live hotspots and first thing I notice on this map first we'll switch back and forth between the perimeter so you can see that it's the area of the northern and northeastern part of the Dixie fire where we have been seeing the most activity recently big reason for that is those southwest winds that pick up in the afternoons and let's actually look at those southwest winds because that really paints the picture of why we're seeing all this activity right now. If we go to the Dixie Fire area and look at the winds that we currently have right now and especially in that eastern section we still have some 35 mile per hour wind gusts and it's 8 p.m. You usually have your strongest wind, wind gusts at about 5 p.m. You can see there is widespread area around the Dixie Fire where we had that increase in winds throughout the day today. So this is what we were talking about yesterday, about why the conditions were going to be so challenging today. 38 mile per hour wind gusts, which is much stronger than we have had in the past. Actually, over the last few days, we've had relatively calm winds because there was this large high pressure system just sitting over California. That's what allowed all that smoke just to settle down throughout California. You probably noticed how much worse the air quality was, but as that high pressure system moves out and this low pressure system and this trough starts to take its place I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna close this as well I think it's causing the computer to go a little slower than I want but basically it's this trough that's to blame for the increase in activity right now as that moves through and you can see it's peaking on Tuesday but we're already starting to see some of the effects from it. That's what's bringing those stronger winds into our area. One thing you can see is earlier this morning and throughout the last couple of days, you notice how far apart those lines are. The farther apart those lines are, they're called isobars, lines of constant pressure. The farther apart those are, the better it is for wildfire because that means the weaker the winds are going to be. Now watch as that trough starts to move in, you notice those lines get a lot closer together and then eventually on Tuesday we're going to be switching to some northerly winds so that's why that red flag warning is in effect tomorrow but again the big story going on right now is that as those extreme winds come in throughout the last few hours and as of right now going into 8 p.m. you can see starting to calm down a little bit but still at 35 miles per hour so very strong and from the southwest that is what's been driving the increase in activity that you can actually see on the imagery right here so when it restarts you can see relatively calm throughout the morning and then right when those winds pick up this afternoon you just see pyrocumulus pyrocumulus another one up here so we almost have it looks like one two three four possibly a fifth coming in soon large pyrocumulus clouds coming off of the Dixie fire as of right now 
So I also see somebody said Monument Fire blew up. That's another fire we're going to be looking at throughout the course of this live stream. Looks like it's especially on the eastern edge of the Monument Fire. And actually, I haven't mentioned the Monument Fire yet. So I do want to just say this. If we look at where the structures are and we look at where the live hotspots are, you can see that I believe that's Junction City right there. Looks like the hotspots are over that area. So I imagine this is an area that already has evacuation orders in place. But I would also definitely stay updated with all the local information if you live in these areas just to the east of the Monument Fire. Because we have seen how fast these fires can move in the past. And I would certainly try to stay updated with local resources to see if there are any new evacuation orders. Now, the one other thing I will say, just in case anyone from the Burnt Ranch area is seeing that hotspots directly over your structures or from the Junction City area where you're seeing the hotspot directly over those structures, one thing that I will say is that these hotspots aren't always exactly on point. So that is one thing to Remember when it comes to this map is that it's satellite imagery picking up hotspots from space so it's not 100% accurate where those hotspots are. We've seen that in the past but again that is why there's such it does paint some kind of a picture about where that activity is because there is a reason that the satellites are picking up those hotspots is because there are a large amount of hotspots and what I think might actually be an even better way to see it is go to the natural color fire. You can zoom in here and you can actually see where that fire activity is. And that was actually the first time I've looked at this or at this map throughout the course of this live stream and throughout the course of today. And just given this information, I would say this is looking worse like when I first started looking at the wildfire information, I could tell the situation was bad, mainly because of all those new evacuation orders that we have throughout Janesville. You, you can, or Janesville and the rest of the Dixie Fire area. Again, this is the Cal Fire Lassen Modoc unit. If you scroll through their Facebook page, it's just evacuation order, evac, evacuation order, evacuation order. You can click on the evacuation map, and you can see it's now including the areas of Janesville and Buntingville, and I would imagine pretty soon Susanville will be under that evacuation map as well. And that painted the picture that the situation right now is a lot worse than it has been over the last few days. But looking at this map, you can see that we're seeing much more fire. You would call this radiative power, but you can also just call it extreme fire behavior than I think we've seen in the entire course of the Dixie Fire. Again, we've been following this for three weeks and I cannot remember a time when the Dixie Fire map looked like this. And the number one thing we should be focusing on here is we know the fire right now is mostly moving up towards the northeast because it's being fanned by these southwesterly wind gusts at about 35 miles per hour. So as long as we have those winds, that fire is going to continue to try to keep moving up farther to the northeast. So the reason that is crucial is the crucial area to look at is because you can see that's exactly where we have the largest amount of structures and especially on the northeastern edge of this fire. So if we look at hopefully this shows where the fire perimeter was yesterday. So we did still have a large amount of activity on that northern section yesterday and that northeastern section but when we looked at it yesterday there was still a large amount of distance between this fire and the Janesville Buntingville area we had about eight miles but then if we look at the live satellite hotspots you can see that it actually appears that a spot fire came into the Jan or Janesville Buntingville area and we're now picking up heat signatures in this in the area that we would have been talking about over the last five to six days with where, where is exactly where we did not want to see heat signatures popping up so again this is going to be one of those live streams where I'm not going to be able to just click through my tabs and give all the information that has been 
updated maybe in the last two hours. What we're going to have to do is just try to stay updated with all the current information that's coming out because it seems like it's one of those days where the situation is going to be changing every five or ten minutes. Key thing that I'm concerned about now is that Susanville, Johnstonville, Janesville, Buntingville areas where you can see those structures are to the northeast of the fire. It looks like we already have a spot fire here and we've had a large amount of growth over the last 24 hours. Just looking at where those hotspots were yesterday and where those hotspots are popping up now, you can see how these southwesterly winds have been pushing that fire forward. So just going to take another look at the live chat, make sure I'm not missing anything important here. Yeah, it went from hotspot to 300 acres to emergency evacuations in about two hours. And again, Janesville, I should probably, whenever I'm looking at the chat, I should just open up this evacuation map so that people can see where all those new evacuation warnings are. Yeah, so it sounds like somebody giving a short update on the scanner said exactly what we didn't want to happen has happened. And that's, I swear I didn't see that live chat comment before I said that because that was actually what I was saying about five minutes ago as well. I was talking about the fact that we've been talking about this northeastern section of the fire for maybe about a week now. We've been talking about how that's the area of the fire where we've been seeing the most activity and that's the area of the fire that I've been the most concerned about because we know that the predominant wind direction during the afternoons is from that southwesterly direction as we we're seeing throughout the day today with even stronger winds throughout the day today than we had seen in previous days. And when you have winds consistently blowing in one direction at the same time when you have very warm temperatures around 80 degrees, most likely it was even warmer than that today. Oh, it said it just updated right as I was clicking away. It said actually 91 degree temperatures today. And then also humidity into the low teens and single digits. mixed with those wind gusts coming in. That's that's like the trifecta of exactly what you don't want to see, especially when you have such a large amount of structures up to the northeastern section of that fire. So going to I believe this map updates automatically, but I'm just gonna make sure we keep updating it because this is going to be a very important area to follow throughout the course of the next few hours because you can see all those hot spots we have there looks like there was a spot fire that started I haven't defined that yet so spot fire is where you have the major blaze like this and then when you get some southwesterly winds coming in like that especially when they're blowing at 38 miles per hour what it's able to do is pick up some of the burning embers from this major blaze carry them you can see they often get carried in a smoke plume like what we're seeing on that northeastern section right there. Inside the plume, it's hot enough for those burning embers to stay on fire. And then what ends up happening is they drop down to the surface where the fuels are critically dry right now, and it starts another fire. And you can see that that one has rapidly grown over the last few hours. And then you can also see that northeastern section right there almost going up to the Jane or the Susanville area has just been taking off throughout the day today. That was actually a part of the fire that looked relatively calm over the last few days. And you can see that that is seeing a large amount of activity and just the entire Dixie fire in general. You can go back through all of my update and forecast videos we've been watching or we've been looking at over the last few days or last a few weeks and I don't think we've ever seen a time where we had that many hot spots. Now one thing I will say is that around the around Lake Almanor it's actually a favorable wind direction if you have structures in this area. When the winds are blowing at 38 miles per hour like that and you can see that the smoke plume is moving in that direction as well 
that's good news for the areas around Lake Almanor. Again, that's why our key concern right now is what's going on in Janesville and Buntingville. So how far did that spot fire ember travel? Let's see if it's on this map. I usually find this one's more accurate. Doesn't look like they have it on that map yet. So let's just see if we can measure it. One thing I will say is that these hotspots aren't always accurate. It's heat signatures being picked up by satellite in space. But we can just, for measurement or for question's sake, we can just try to measure it. I imagine the spot fire started down here. And then those southwest winds just continued to blow it up from the north. It's unlikely that it actually started up here and then went against the wind all the way down here. So when we try to figure out this measurement right here, look like it's maybe three to four miles that that spot fire could have traveled in. Well, that doesn't sound realistic. I do remember listening to one Cal Fire representative where he, he actually said they were seeing spot fires three to four miles away. And he said it was something that he hadn't personally seen in his 20 year career with Cal Fire. He said they were seeing spot fires farther than he's ever seen before. And that, that I think has been the biggest factor on the Dixie Fire throughout the entire course of its lifetime. Is it's as we get those strong afternoon wind gusts it leads to those spot fires and then that's when we have the most rapid growth now i haven't really mentioned the northwestern section yet but you can see that's also an area of the fire where we're seeing a lot of fire activity that's actually the part of the fire that has the largest pyrocumulus cloud coming off of it right now and then i also remember when we we're looking at the natural color fire you can see how intensely that north that northern section is burning there, but actually just all four of those different sections on the Dixie Fire seeing a large. Yeah, so Lucy said started at the bottom, then blew up. I I would definitely think that's the case with that spot fire there. Because with those southwesterly winds, it would make sense that it would maybe started down here where the fuels are critically dry. I remember hearing a Cal Fire report that with those burning embers, once they fall to the ground, they said there's about a 90 to 100% chance of them actually starting a new fire. Which is just unheard of, and it comes back to the fact that we're in a very bad drought in California right now, and it's also been extremely dry over the last few days, or last month, I would say, and that's continued to dry out the fuels as well. So large ash is falling in the fire camp in Susanville per a firefighter I just talked to. So one thing that I can say, so this is going to apply to, I see a lot of people asking about the monument fire. The weather forecast I think applies to all the various fires going on in California. So I will just do a quick weather forecast because as we can see, the situation is very bad right now. And I hate to say it, but the situation is actually expected to get even worse throughout the day tomorrow. If we go back to this map, this pretty much tells the story. We have all that activity going on on the Dixie Fire right now and the Monument Fire for that matter as well. And if we click on the red flag warning, you can see that they don't actually start the red flag warning until 11 a.m. to 11 p.m., on Tuesday so we're going to have even more challenging conditions throughout the day tomorrow so I want to take a very close look at that and then I also want to take a close look at if the situation throughout the night tonight is going to improve or if it's still going to be very strong winds and low relative humidity throughout the entire overnight hours because based on what the map looks like right now we, we pretty much need conditions to calm down overnight to keep this fire from spreading too much farther. So, again, this weather forecast, I'm going to, when we look at the very local area, we're going to mostly look at the Dixie fire, but the overall pattern is going to be applicable to the Dixie, McFarland, Monument, River Complex, and Antelope. Now, I think this paints the picture the best because this 
explains why the situation is as bad as it is for the Dixie Fire and the other fires in Northern Cal California as well. So for a number of days leading up until Sunday, we had this high pressure system that just continued to strengthen over California. You probably noticed it. You probably noticed it in two different ways if you lived anywhere in California. One, your temperatures were most likely increasing. I certainly noticed that where I live. And that was because that high pressure system was strengthening. And then the other thing you probably noticed is that the smoke seemed to be getting worse because when you have a high pressure system, you get calmer winds. And then that allowed those winds to really settle down, especially into the Sacramento and San Joaquin valleys over the Dixie Fire as well. Now, that was leading up till Sunday. That was the peak of the high pressure system. And then both starting today, this afternoon, you start to see this trough coming in, and then that is going to peak on Tuesday, exactly when that red flag warning comes in. And I'll just give you the tease for it. There, That's not a coincidence. It's this trough and this low pressure system that's bringing the extreme conditions to the Dixie Fire right now and is also going to be leading to the, the very critical fire weather conditions throughout the day tomorrow, which as of right now are possibly even looking like they're going to be worse than today. Now, the big change in the forecast between today and tomorrow is the direction of the winds. So right now, you can see as that low pressure system's up there, think about the counterclockwise circulation around it, that means on this lower edge, we have those southwesterly winds coming in. So that's exactly what we're seeing on the Dixie Fire right now. That's why we've had so much growth to the northeast. It's because of those southwesterly winds that you can see right there that are bringing the 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts to that area and continuing to spread the fire to the northeast. Now as we look into Tuesday though, that low is going to build all the way through and then again it has counterclockwise circulation. So you can see on Tuesday the winds are actually going to shift direction because now we'll be on more the left side of that low and it'll be coming from a more northerly direction. So one thing I would say is that that could actually end up, it could end up being good news for the Susanville, Janesville area. Because if we switch to a more northerly direction in our winds, that would try to blow the fire back down to the south. But I wouldn't exactly say that is good news because you look at where some of these other hot spots are on the Dixie Fire, and we do still have a large amount of structures just south of those areas around like Lake Almanor or Westwood. So pretty much no matter which way the winds blow, there's going to be some kind of structures in their path. And unfortunately, the winds are going to be getting stronger throughout the day tomorrow, which is exactly what we did not want to see. And again, it's all because of that low that as it comes through, it's bringing those extreme winds with it. Now, at that same time, we also have very dry air over California. You would hope that a low pressure system was bringing a, a large amount of moisture, but unfortunately, just very dry air over California. And then we'll go back to windy so that you can actually see that wind shift or the winds that are happening right now. And then also that wind shift that we're going to be expecting tomorrow. And I'm actually going to start with where we are right now and then click all the way through because I want to see if these winds calm down overnight because that is exactly what we need to happen as of right now. Wow. Thank you, Jimmy, for the huge super chat. That is very, very generous of you. He says, thank you for the hard work and dedication. Your information got my family and I out of danger way early. May you stay blessed. Let there be light. Thank you very much, Jimmy. I'm very happy to hear that my videos were able to help in some way. That's really the main reason I do these videos. I have lived in California my entire life and I know how difficult it can be sometimes to find the most recent information and find out what's going on in the situation. So I know that since I'm getting my master's in meteorology and my major focus is wildfire and I'm looking at all this information anyway, it's almost kind of my responsibility to be a middleman for this kind of information to get it out there to as wide of an audience as possible. So thank you very much, Jimmy. And 
again, great to hear that your family got out to safety. And actually, that's a good transition. I, I, we will look at what these winds are going to be doing overnight to see if they're actually going to be calming down. But just in case there's anybody new to the live chat, I do want to just say the most important thing that's going on right now. There are a large number of new evacuation orders around the Dixie Fire. The reason for that is because we've seen a massive increase in fire behavior over the last couple of hours. You can see these four large pyrocumulus clouds coming off of the Dixie Fire. We have wind gusts coming in at about 35 to 40 miles per hour, continuing to spread that fire to the northeast. And you can see that, unfortunately, it looks like we got a spot fire that was fueled by those southwesterly winds taking some burning embers here bringing it into the Janesville Buntingville area and as of right now you can see that Janesville and Buntingville are now under that evacuation order and Susanville looks like it's getting fairly close one thing I always say about these evacuation orders is I personally don't wait until I get one if you do get one, I would say leave immediately, but personally, I don't even wait until I get an evacuation order to leave. If I if I start feeling it in my gut that things are looking sketchy, ash is falling, then I just leave immediately, pack up stuff, and get out of there. Because you never know if there's going to be some trouble with the power, some trouble with the emergency warning, so always good to just trust your gut. And thank you, Acrylic Goblin, for the super chat as well. That's a, that's a pretty cool name you got there. <laughs> um, but back to the evacuation orders again. This link is in the description. Another great place to get information. These three Facebook pages. Cal Fire Lassen Modic Unit. Cal Fire Butte County. Plumas County Sheriff's Office. And they are supposed to be giving an update at about 8 p.m. So let's refresh this page to see if they uploaded the video yet. I would imagine that they have their hands full, and so it looks like they actually do have the update, so I think let's watch this together because this is going to be, oh, uh, it looks like it's just the incident update, but actually this would be interesting to look at as well, so I'll download that, and then we'll see if they post that video again we looked at that earlier but they said they weren't going to be doing one of those live stream updates today so due to the red flag warning we will be providing a brief pre-recorded incident update this evening in lieu of the previously scheduled virtual community meeting the update will be posted at approximately 8 p.m. so we'll keep looking back for that update because that's going to be the key place to find out the most recent information. So back to what we were talking about with the weather forecast. Key thing that we want to see here is if those winds are going to be, actually before we look at the winds, I do want to see if we can see any of those, if we can see any of that activity on this camera. Certainly hope that's not all fire down there. Looks like it's bright, but doesn't look like it's moving at this point. Possibly a plume off in the distance right there. Looks like that, if we zoom in, looks like that's some activity right there. Then we can also try to see what this camera is pointed at. Oh, interesting. So, looks like it was trying to scan through the northeastern side of this fire. That might be a plume up there. I think the better place to get information or actual footage is from Alert Wildfire. Let's go let's go back to I'll try to remember what that one camera was. I think somebody said it was Hamilton. That was what we were looking at earlier where we could see the large amount of activity and it actually looked like the fire was starting to go over the ridge line. One thing before I press play, or actually I'll press play so that I can load while we're talking about it. So, looks like this camera points down on that northeastern section of the fire where we're seeing the most activity. So I am very interested to see 
what this camera looks like right now. And then we can also check out that camera in a second too to see if we can actually see the activity across Janesville. Because looking at this map, it does look, or I, I think I meant to say Susanville right there. Yeah, we'll take a look at that camera next to see if we can see any activity going across Susanville because based on the heat signatures, it certainly looks like there's some activity just to the southwest of Susanville. And with that being said, I'll go back to this map too. Looks, I'll make sure it's updated. Don't know if that map automatically updates, so I'll, I should keep doing that. Doesn't look like all of Susanville's in that evacuation order yet, but again, if if I personally lived in Susanville, I'd I would probably just leave right now. Just to just to be sure. There's and it's always better to get packed up. Oh, um so I I am live right now. I see somebody was asking that in the live chat. I'm most likely going to continue to be live over the next couple of hours. I usually lose my voice within about two hours of doing these live streams, but given the current situation, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to keep it going as long as I can throughout the night tonight because it does look like we have that developing situation where things are looking not exactly as we would like to see them. Now we'll look at this view in one second. And then we'll look at that Susanville camera to see if... And thank you, Mike, very much for the super chat. Um, well, <laughs> I see you say you give much more info than Cal Fire. That's kind of the philosophy of what I'm doing here. There's lots and lots of different places to get wildfire information. So including Cal Fire, including InsuWeb, including Facebook, Twitter. So almost what I try to do is just collect as much information as I can and then just be the middleman and try to say the most important information that I've been able to find in as concise a manner as I can as I can make it. So before we look at this fire that looks like it is going over the ridge line from the Hamilton Mountain camera, we've been talking about this over the last five minutes, so I really just want to see if these winds are going to be calming down throughout the night because so far we might be an hour into this live stream and we haven't been able to find one piece of good news yet actually we maybe had one piece of good news the winds are mostly blowing from the southwest so that would be blowing this hot spot away from those structures around Lake Almanor that I always try to look for the silver lining and that was I think the only one we found so far but I think overall the theme for this video is not going to be one with a lot of good news mainly because of all that activity we see on the northeastern section there and also because of that spot fire that looks like it has been going into the Janesville and Buntingville areas and due to all the new evacuation orders that we have. So looking at the winds, I'm certainly hoping to see them calm down throughout the night tonight. I'll just click here. That's probably, actually, let's go directly in Janesville. So I think it was right about there. So backing up, looks like it's 32 miles per hour right now. Again, that's why we're seeing so much activity. Oh, get a drink of water. That is a great idea. It's been, don't think I've had a drink of water yet. And I see somebody just said fire coming down the hill towards Janesville. So going through here, what we're hoping is that these winds start to calm down. It looks like as early as 11 p.m. they at least calm down by about 10 to 15 miles per hour, which is actually huge news right there. Because if we're seeing it continue at 35 to 38 miles per hour all throughout the night, that would just continue to... <laughs> Let it play, take a breath, I love it. That, that'll be a great thing once I actually do play that alert wildfire camera. But first, I do want to see how much these winds calm down. Because getting into 11 p.m., 
fact that we're going down to 21 miles per hour again, that's more than we usually see at 3 or 4 in the afternoon when it's supposed to be the windiest part of the fire. But it's at least not the 35 to 40 miles per hour like we're seeing right now. Then it looks like 2 a.m. it calms down to 13. Then to 12 at 5 a.m. And then as early as 8 a.m. It looks like those winds start picking back up again. This is now Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. We're already up to 28 miles per hour coming from the southwest. So while we do have that stretch of maybe six hours overnight where the winds get somewhat calmer, it looks like it looks like it's going to be one of those nights where we continue to see active fire behavior throughout the overnight hours. And then that's the big concern for tomorrow. You can see getting into Tuesday afternoon, we have those gusts even stronger than we're seeing as of right now. Getting up to 38 miles per hour, then almost 40 by 5 p.m. And one thing to note, we talked about how the winds are changing direction. Because of this low pressure system as it comes in, right now it's bringing those southwesterly winds. And then tomorrow afternoon, we'll have some northerly winds. But you can almost see the two different areas around the Dixie Fire up to the very north of the Dixie Fire. That's where we do have those northerly winds. But unfortunately... By the Susanville and Janesville area, it almost looks like it's still blowing from the west and almost even southwest. So we would hope to see, and then the north winds come in a little bit later. It makes sense because the, the low pressure system's to the north of us. So it would take a little longer for that wind shift to get down here. But that is a concern because at 5 p.m. tomorrow, when it's going to be the warmest, driest part of the day. We still have those 35 to 40 mile per hour wind gusts blowing into the Janesville, Susanville type areas. And I am curious to see what the temperatures will be as well. Looks like there will be a drop in temperatures with that low pressure system coming in. And then humidity is still going to be very dry in the teens, possibly even the single digits in some places. That's actually one other thing I wanna see is if the relative humidity calms down throughout the night tonight because that's also going to play a huge role in how active the fire is overnight. So just going through here, looks like it goes up to 30%, 43%, 52%, then back down to 37. So we do see some increase in the relative humidity, which should hopefully calm down the fire somewhat between two and 5 a.m and also when we have those weaker winds as well, with those gusts down to 10 to 15 miles per hour instead of 35 to 40 miles per hour, but it's not going up to 70 or 80%, so we most likely still will see some activity throughout the overnight hours, but the big concern right now is the fact that we still have those southwesterly winds blowing in at about 30 to 35 miles per hour from the southwest, and the main thing that's causing is that fire to continue to move to the northeast, which you can see on these hotspot maps. The other thing it causes is this spot fire that appears to be ex it appears to be the exact situation we did not want to hap happen, and what we were talking about for the last five to six days. We kept coming back to this area and saying hotspots are all the way down here, but we're expected to see some strong southwesterly winds, and that could lead to some rapid northeast growth of this fire but unfortunately it's been even faster than we could have imagined how fast this fire appears to have moved up to the northeast throughout the day today is much much faster than we were expecting to see and it just shows how important winds are to a fire now i have seen a large number of people in the live chat i'm Trying to do a better job today than I usually do at keeping an eye on the live chat just because we do have such a developing situation. So we will go over to the Monument Fire. You can see this is an area that's covered in that red flag warning Tuesday afternoon to Tuesday night as well. So it's going to be some very critical conditions there. Quite possibly even windier conditions for Tuesday afternoon in this area. This is a part of California that always sees those very strong 
wind gusts coming in and looking at Tuesday afternoon, we're going to have, again, those gusts up to 30, 35 miles per hour. Depending on where you are, it could be even more than that. So tomorrow looking very dangerous for the Monument Fire, McFarland Fire as well, River Complex. Seeing lots of hot spots on that southeastern edge. You can see Weaverville there, Junction City right there. It's a bit better to actually look on this map where you can see where those hot spots are right now. It, I hate to say it, but it looks like those hot spots are over Junction City right now. One thing I will say is I haven't actually been able to find any resources yet that talk about the fire activity in Junction City. But based on this map, it looks like the hotspots are over Junction City. But again, what I'll always say is these heat signatures aren't perfect. We've seen this time and time again throughout these videos where the satellites are doing the best they can to pick up where those heat signatures are, but it can be off. So I'm just kind of grasping at straws here just hoping that those hot spots aren't actually in that area now you can see where we have junction city and where we have weaverville so let's take a look it does look like those hot spots are i imagine that's junction city and that's weaverville right there so looks like weaverville is still out of those hot spots but i will say that as i was just saying those hot spots aren't always perfect on this map and we'll have to keep an eye on it I would, uh, I haven't been keeping up with the evacuation orders in this area, but I would imagine that if they haven't issued some yet, they most likely are going to soon. And looks like we've had a lot of growth down to the southern edge of this fire, and it looks like there's a large amount of structures down there. I've never looked at that area yet. Looks like it's Hayfork. That is going to be a key area to watch. We haven't talked about that once throughout these videos. But the reason I'm thinking about that is because of those nor that shift to more northerly winds tomorrow. You can see that directly in this area. It's more northerly winds at around 35 miles per hour. So that is going to be a key area we watch tomorrow. We haven't had that on the list yet of places to look out for. But it looks like that'll be a spot that we have to follow closely tomorrow. Because with those northerly winds coming in, it'll try to push the fire down to the south. If you don't believe me that the direction a fire is going to move is the direction the winds are blowing, you can just look at the northeastern section of the Dixie Fire right now where because of those strong southwesterly winds throughout the day today, where are we? Right here. Because of those strong southwesterly winds throughout the day today, blowing, uh, there we go. Blowing at about 35 miles per hour from the southwest. That's what allowed this northeastern section of the fire to flare up and also cause a spot fire that appears to have gone into the Janesville, Buntingville area. And given the live chat, it does sound like they're saying that fire activity does look like it's reaching into the Janesville area. So we did look at this cam. This is, it looks, just to show you where this camera is, it looks like it is, oh, it just disappeared on us. It was about like right there, looking down on the northeastern section of the fire. You could see it right there. So now let's actually see what this looks like because earlier when we looked at this camera, it looked like the fire was starting to come over this ridge right here. This is the camera from Hamilton Mountain. You can see that smoke plume coming off, and if you look closely, you can actually see some flames pushing over that ridge line as well. So I'm just going to be replaying that right now, and that's actually a great idea. Warm lemon water with raw honey. I think... When Cal Fire does their, finally post their update video, I'm going to play it on my phone so I can listen to it. And while I'm listening to it on my phone, I will make that drink that you just suggested there. Can you check the Antelope Mountain camera? Yes, we can. So, looks like there's 
three different ones. This one looks like it actually has some activity on it. Or perhaps those are lights. We'll have to see. Wow. You can see the large smoke plume coming over the fire. Or coming over this area. So you notice that one flash in the camera right there. This is something that always throws me off when I'm watching these. Is you, It almost looks like lightning at some points, but what that actually is, is the smoke gets so thick that the camera actually shifts to night vision for a split second before it switches back to day. And then you can see switching back to night vision. So one thing I will point out on this, it looks... Based on the nighttime shot that we have some, I believe there's some houses down there. It looks like there's, yeah, it looks like there's some structures. So, I want to see where this camera is. Oh, this is actually the next one that we were going to look at anyway. So you can see that going right over Susanville. Now we have a better grip of exactly what we're looking at here. So I believe Susanville is down in the foreground right here, and you can see how the smoke is going directly over Susanville. You can see the ash coming onto the camera as well. And the reason why you don't, why this is exactly what we don't want to see, is because the fact that the smoke is going directly over Susanville means that the winds are blowing directly over Susanville, which means that it's going to continue to push that fire closer towards Susanville. So somebody asked if those light if that light right there is the fire activity or if it's lights from the town and it's kind of hard to tell. So let's go to 15 minutes and see if it's clear. It kind of looks like nah, I I don't want to say it's fire activity without actually knowing but it does look like it's moving it's not like a stationary light down here and it looks like it's pulsing which is something you typically see with when it comes to wildfires they it's not just constant growth usually the wildfire itself almost pulses so it does actually look like that is fire coming over that ridge line there but again we don't know that for sure so I'm hesitant to say that's exactly a fire coming over that ridge yet but just based on looking at it it looks like it has that pulsating behavior like a fire does but it's also hard to see how far away that might be if we look at this map we'll just reload it again just in case looks like some of those hot spots are starting to get to some of the outskirts around Susanville, where we do have some of those structures. Just based on where the most recent hotspot is to Susanville, that shows about three miles right there. But again, these hotspots aren't always very reliable. So we'll certainly have to keep an eye on this camera throughout the course of this live stream. That's actually also another good point is hopefully this camera would be facing towards the west. So hopefully that's just the sun poking through the smoke or the smoke plume. Hoping it's the sun. We'll just have to keep reloading that to see if we get a better view of that in the future. We can also check another one of these cameras to see if they're picking up any area uh, it doesn't look like anything on that map check out Dyer Mountain this is one we haven't looked at in a while and it does look like there's a large a large amount of activity going on throughout the day today you can see that large smoke plume we had what we were talking about earlier is that you can actually see those strong winds come up throughout the day today. How you know that is 
Earlier in the day, we had that large smoke plume blowing straight up into the atmosphere, and then the winds actually got so strong that it started to flatten that smoke plume out, even though fire activity was actually picking up in this area. And you can also just see the large amount of activity there when it switches to night vision, then you can actually see where that fire is. I want to reload this and see if we can get a better look at that recent fire activity right there. We'll go to 15 minutes. You can see where it is down in the foreground. Look like we had a smoke plume off in the distance there and then certainly flaring up in that region as well. So lots of cams that we're going to have to keep an eye on throughout the course of this video. We'll go to Dire Mountain 2, see if there's another angle of what's going on. Oh, is this the camera that just spins and spins? Oh, it's a shame it's spinning because it looks like it has some very interesting shots. We'll see if we can just kind of click through it. Looks like there's a large smoke plume there. Lots of smoke and then... Yeah, it doesn't look like that one's going to be too helpful to look at. Interested to see Indian Ridge. This is... Seems like the Indian Ridge camera consistently has a lot of fire growth. See that smoke inversion earlier in the day? That smoke was actually keeping some of our fire activity down over the last few days, but as those stronger winds come in, it starts to clear some of that smoke out and allows us our temperatures to get hotter, and then it allows the fire to flare up like you can see in the very eastern side of that video right there. So going to have to keep a close eye on all of those cameras throughout the course of this video. One thing I will say, just in case you're new to the live stream, is when it comes to the Dixie Fire, we have a large amount of new evacuation orders in place. This is the top story that we're following throughout the entire course of this video, including evacuation orders now in the Janesville and Buntingville area. Looks like it is getting very close to the Susanville area as well. Reason for that, if we zoom out here, you can see where those hot spots are on the Dixie Fire right now. Seeing more activity on the Dixie Fire than I think we've seen in the entire course of the Dixie Fire's lifetime on the northwestern side, the area north of Lake Elmnor, and then this area right here that's split in two because of the sheep fire. Again, it was the sheep fire right there that, oh, and that's actually interesting. We haven't looked at this yet. Where those hot spots are right now, it looks like the sheep fire is still between those hot spots and Susanville. Actually, I want to be sure that we're looking at the right place. It's hard when you're just looking at orange dots here. So actually it looks like that's Susanville up there. Looks like maybe half of it is protected by the sheep fire burn scar, but it can wrap around that north side. We do have the devil burn scar and the Cheney burn scar, but those are a bit older, so some of those fuels would be able to grow back. But this actually explains why there's those two big hot spots you see on this map right here. It was as the Dixie Fire came up to the Sheep Fire Burn Scar, enough of these fuels had been burned out that the Dixie Fire stopped in its tracks right there, and then half of it started going around the Sheep Fire Burn Scar in this direction, and the other half started going around the Sheep Fire Burn Scar in this direction. And then since then, you can see the two big dangers that this is posing right now. That section that broke around the Sheep Fire Burn Scar to the northern direction seems to just be going around right there. It looks like it is split between the hog fire in 2020 and the sheep fire in 2020. It's been able to go right between those, which is now threatening the area around Susanville. And then the big story on this northeastern front is the fact that it created a spot fire which has grown rapidly and appears to actually be getting into the Janesville and Buntingville areas. So... Again, the big story there is that we have those evacuation orders in place. And we're going to have to just continue to follow this throughout the next 
couple of hours, I think, because this is going to be one of those situations where we don't really know how it's going to turn out because we do still have those very strong winds right now. Relative humidity is fairly low right now. So we are going to continue to see a lot of this fire activity that we're seeing pick up throughout the last few hours. You can see one, two, three, four large pyrocumulus clouds coming off of the Dixie fire. And the big thing you see on the satellite imagery is that it's blowing up towards the northeast which is being fueled by those strong southwesterly winds, which is why the fire is burning up to the northeast. And now that it has switched to that nighttime image, you can actually see where that spot fire is and how much it grew just in one day. So I'll zoom in even more there. You can actually see it growing to the northeast if you look really closely. You can see it right there, and then you can see it starting to spread up to the northeast. You might be able to see it even better on this because we won't have to look through the smoke. There it is right there. Then let's see if it shows when it starts the spot fire right there. The spot fire starts and then you can see how much that's been growing over the last hour or two. That is, I think, the main concern for the Janesville, Buntingville areas is that spot fire. And it's almost just unfair when it comes to these fires sometimes because I know they were working very hard to get some containment lines in here, some contingency lines. So contingency lines, that means just in case the fire crosses the containment line, they have another line as backup. But then what we've seen happen throughout the entire course of the Dixie Fire, this has happened numerous times, and there's really nothing you can do about it. It's where you get those strong southwesterly winds at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. What happens is even if you have the best containment lines in the world, keeping that section of the fire just nice and controlled, all it takes is one burning ember to get picked up by those 35 mile per hour winds, dumped three hour, or three miles to the northeast, starts its own little spot fire, and then takes off past where you had those previous containment lines. Certainly looks like exactly what happened throughout the day today, and what's happening as of right now. So. That northeastern section of the Dixie Fire, certainly the area that we're watching the closest right now. The good news is it does look like the winds are going to be calming some over the next couple of hours. But it's going to remain still over 10 mile per hour wind gusts with relative humidity not seeing that great of a recovery overnight. So we will likely continue to see some activity. And the big thing I have to say is that if you live in the Susanville, Johnstonville, Janesville, Buntingville areas... You can see how close these hot spots appear to be getting. There's going to continue to be some southwesterly winds trying to continue to push this fire farther to the northeast. So if you're in the areas that already have the evacuation order, I would get out immediately. And then if you're not in an area that's currently under evacuation order, but you're starting to feel like you should leave, I I always lean towards better better safe than sorry. It's always just good to leave when you can, and you never know if there's going to be a power outage or the emergency notifications won't work or something. So if you're to the northeast of this fire, I, if you have an evacuation order, I would certainly leave immediately. And if you're not under an evacuation order, but your gut is telling you to leave, it's always good to listen to your gut in these kind of situations. So... Somebody just said the Schaefer Mountain camera seems to be showing the spot fire near Janesville. So that is why I love that we have such great moderators on these live chats that keep this live chat perfectly kind of helpful and informative because it's I never want to turn the live chat off because we do get great comments like that where they tell me exactly what kind of camera to look at. And I see maybe there might be some comments coming in that I, I haven't been able to keep up with the live chat that well. But uh, yeah, let's certainly try to keep it friendly. I, I don't know what comments came in, but uh, definitely I trust my, my moderator's judgment. Lucy and White Dev always do a great job. You guys should give a nice shout out in the comments to... 
Lucy and White Dove, who do such a great job of keeping this live chat friendly and informative. So, and thank you very much for the super chat right there. So, Schaefer Mountain, that... That was the one that we want to look at. Let's load it over the last three hours. And I want to go back to that comment. It was from Isaac. He said, Schaefer Mountain Camera seems to show the spot fire near Janesville. So this would be very interesting if we can actually see that spot fire start to come in on this imagery. And again, thank you very much for that most recent super chat right there. Thank you for all your earnest effort and genuine care for others hold. Thank you for the super chat. And thank you to, I believe his name was Isaac, going back up. Yeah, thank you, Isaac, for suggesting we look at this camera because it does look like we can actually see that spot fire. Actually, before we look at this, I want to see exactly where this is. That camera right there. So we're looking down. It looks like this camera is to the east of Susanville, looking down in this direction. So, looking at the hotspots, that would be most likely the area of the hotspot right there, or perhaps growth on this area that's pushed farther up to the north. Hard to connect those two images right there, though, to know exactly what part of the fire we're looking at. But one indication that you can see is if you imagine those hot spots down right there those southwesterly winds are blowing directly over this camera and you can actually see the smoke blowing directly over this camera before it appears that we can start to see the hot spot as well so going in here see that how much smoke is over the area that's because all the fire from farther down to the southwest is being blown up to the northeast and then you see some of the lights from what appear to be structures and I'd imagine that's the, I want to look at that map again. So it looks like it's to the east of Susanville, looking down almost to the tip of this lake right here. So let's see if we can find that on the Cal Topo map. Is that the lake right there? It certainly doesn't look like a lake. Let's see. Sometimes this map is easier to see. Yeah, so that does appear to be Honey Lake right there. I wonder why it looks like it's that color. I wonder if it's completely dried out with the current drought that we're in. So going back right here, it looks like there's that hot spot right to the west of Honey Lake. So that looks like it is the Janesville and Buntingville areas. And then looking back at this, it looks like it's pointed directly at the edge of Honey Lake. So we're, we're trying to piece together. Yeah, so people are, I see in the live chat, it's a dry lake, that's Lake Honey Lake. Yeah, so we've pieced together exactly what we're looking at here. It looks like we're looking directly over the Janesville, Buntingville areas. I imagine the camera is somewhere right about up here. So let's look at it again to see that spot fire start to come into this area. Again, lots of smoke throughout the day. And then you can actually see the fires better once it switches to night vision. Sort of see the smoke plume popping up there. And then it switches to night vision see some of the houses and then you see where that spot fire is so thank you very much Isaac for putting this in the live chat because we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that throughout the course of this entire live stream and it would actually also be interesting to check out the 15 minutes on this oh definitely Oh geez, that looks worse than the other camera looked. So again, this is the Schaefer Mountain. It looks like we're looking over Janesville and Buntingville areas. And you can see, one thing I notice is all these cars going out this direction. I imagine that's just everybody trying to evacuate as of right now. Because you can almost see that fire on the horizon right there. Am 
man. And thank you very much, Brand X, for the super chat. Many thanks to our patient moderators and for creating this little community. And that that is kind of what I think of these videos. It is kind of like we're all... It might sound corny and cheesy, but I really do feel like we're almost making these videos together because if it was just me looking at these maps, I'm there's only so much I'm personally going to be able to see. But then when you guys are able to comment in and ask questions and suggest cameras like the Schaefer Mountain camera, it really does help make these videos better. So and then that ends up being more helpful for everybody else. So it really is kind of a community that we're all kind of coming together to make these videos as informative and up to date as possible. So great job to our moderators and great job to also everybody posting the helpful questions and comments and the great camera recommendations as we we're just seeing right here, Schaefer Mountain camera where we can see that spot fire that appears to be moving into the Janesville Buntingville area where we do have evacuation orders in place as of right now. And you say, is that 395? We might be able to see it on this map. I would imagine it's either 395 or this road right. Yeah, it looks it looks like it's 395. Because if you look at there's Honey Lake. When we we're looking at the where this camera is, it looks like it's pointed directly to the western edge of Honey Lake. And then you can see all those cars that appear to be evacuating right there as the fire appears to be on the horizon. And somebody asked, will they drop retardant lines around Susanville? So, oh, and then I first want to answer this question because somebody asked, where is it going right now? You can see where those hotspots are right now. More hotspots than I think we've seen on the Dixie Fire throughout the entire course of its lifetime. And it's still being fueled by those southwesterly winds about at about 30 miles per hour. So it's going to continue to try to move farther to the northeast. That's why we're going to really try to stay up to date with all the most recent information because the wind speeds and the wind direction are not working in our favor as it will continue to try the try to push these fires farther to farther to the northeast and you can actually see exactly what that hotspot is that we were just looking at on the camera it's that hotspot right there to the left of honey lake again this was created from this flare up that we have on the northeastern section again as the dixie fire came up to where the sheep fire burn scar was in 2020 it split in two Half of it appeared to go to the north of that burn scar and is now starting to threaten areas like Susanville from the north. And then the other half went around the sheep fire burn scar to the east. And then throughout the day today, the big story that happened was we had this spot fire that was able to jump. We measured it earlier. It was about three miles. And then it looks like it has moved into the Janesville Buntingville area just on the western edge of Honey Lake right there. And unfortunately, we are going to continue to see those strong southwesterly winds that will continue to try to push these both of these hotspots farther to the north. So, Holt, can you turn on hybrid on the map, then click cam to show info and turn the target on. You will see exactly where it is pointing. So... Never done this before. Oh, I think it's right here. Hybrid, then click cam to show info. 209 degrees, net county, Lassen, region, LMU. Nice. Oh, that is a very useful tool thank you very much trish for letting me know so that camera is going right over what looks to be litchfield standish janesville and then earlier somebody asked if it's 395 that road where it looks like everybody's evacuating and it does look like that is 395 there so great comment right there certainly certainly helpful to get all of your guys input and then somebody also asked if they're going to be dropping retardant over susanville or janesville and 
that's a good question because we see how much activity that we have throughout these areas. We see that the fire and especially that spot fire appears. <laughs> Take another drink. I'm glad I have you guys reminding me. Hopefully you guys reminding me to drink water will keep my voice long enough to keep this live stream going much longer than usual. So what we were just saying is based on the activity we have right now, I actually want to look at the smoke more than anything. You can see how much smoke is being produced on those four smoke plumes right now. Now, there there may be the ability to use some aircraft though because not I wouldn't imagine directly underneath those smoke plumes because you can see how much smoke that is, but because of the strong winds today, you can see that overall over the Dixie Fire, it has been clearing out a lot more of the smoke than we were seeing in previous days. So I would actually like to see if they have some aircraft on this fire right now. And I still need to get the uh, official paid version of this. Because I do want to start using this more and remove the ads. So, good news. Looks like they are able to fly some aircraft. Or, I hope that's not just a... Yeah, that might just be a commercial plane. What about this one? Uh, those look like they're commercial planes. This one. Hmm. So you can see where Lake Almanor is. It looks like we have some planes in the region, but doesn't look like they're actually firefighting planes. Oh, so that's a great comment. Throughout the fire, crews have been applying retardant from the ground using their water tenders because air attack has been a limited option. That is a great comment right there. Let's actually look at how many water tenders we're working with. Because I do remember Cal Fire saying that at one point, that when you have that much smoke, especially underneath those smoke plumes, where when we're looking at the alert wildfire camera earlier, there were some... Oh, wow, we're going to have to look at Beckworth, Beckworth Peak and Butt Lake in a second here. And take another look at the Dyer Mountain camera, Indian Ridge camera, Oregon Mountain camera. Yeah, there's going to be lots of different cameras that we're going to have to keep our eye on throughout the entire course of this video. But I do want to see how many water tenders we have because that's going to be crucial to applying that retardant on the ground if we're not able to. Yeah, so don't see any planes over Susanville on flight radar. Gotcha. Air support only happens in daylight and during acceptable conditions, visibility and wind speed. So, yeah, I'd say as of right now, yeah, and unfortunately no air, air tankers until this morning. So as of right now, I'd say those three factors that Emily's saying we need for air support we're going against all those. It's now nighttime. We don't have acceptable conditions because visibility is poor and the wind speeds are still strong. So when it comes to any retardant that might be applied, that'll mostly be from those water tenders. And that is possibly where some of the good news comes in. We do have about 200 water tenders on this fire, 200 dozers, 569 engines, 20 helicopters, although we can't use those right now, and 6,500 personnel. Yeah, a number of people saying smoke shut down the air operations and I do have to plug this in so it does not die because I'm certainly very helpful to be able to read this live chat right now because of your guys' great information and then also the great camera recommendations you've been putting forward. So just in case you're new to this live stream, I want to just do a quick refresher on the most important things that we're following right now the big story that happened throughout the past couple of hours was as this high pressure system that's been over california it's what's been causing those warm temperatures the last few days as that 
has been weakening and this low pressure system has been starting to move into the Pacific Northwest, which is going to be even stronger throughout the day tomorrow. What that's been doing is it brought some strong wind gusts to much of Northern California. And you can see how that increased the activity on the Dixie Fire over the last five hours as those southwesterly winds came in at about 35 to 40 miles per hour. You can see those large smoke plumes coming off of the Dixie Fire. Looks like the northern section is absolutely blowing up right now. But the most important part of the Dixie Fire that we're looking at right now is on this northeastern section right here where it starts a spot fire right there. And then that spot fire appears to be moving into the Janesville and Buntingville areas. You can see it again. Embers are picked up by the winds, starts a spot fire right there. And now that spot fire appears to be moving into the Janesville and Buntingville areas. We can see it right there where you can see where that hot spot has started to move into where those structures are. To see the structures, I'll flash them on and off. And then we also have the northern edge of this fire appearing like it's pushing around to the north and starting to possibly threaten the areas around Susanville as well. Unfortunately, we're still going to have some dry conditions over the next couple of hours with those southwest winds continuing. So we'll continue to see more growth to the northeast here. Big thing that I want to point out is that there have been a large number of new evacuation orders, including, I believe, the entire area of Janesville. I think we can actually click in there. Evacuation order, immediate threat to life. This is a lawful order to leave now. The area is lawfully closed to public access. So that's been the big update. I put the link for this in the description below where you can find out all the most recent information for the evacuation orders. And we're just going to have to continue to follow that because looking at the live camera, this is looking at that Janesville area. You can see a large amount of, co of cars, what appear to be leaving on the 395 and then what appears to be that, that spot fire that we were just looking at continuing to grow and burn brighter in the distance here. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on this whole area over the course of this video. Now, one thing I really want to see, Cal Fire promised us an update at one point, and I really want to see if this update came in because that's going to be the best place to get the most recent information. And it does look like they just put it in. So what we're going to do is what we usually do when Cal Fire has an update like this. I'm going to play it and then I'm going to stay on the live chat so you guys can ask any... Oh, actually, before I play this, somebody just mentioned that the Indian, the Indian Ridge camera is pointed right at Janesville last hour. can see it. So I do want to check that out. And af after that CAL FIRE update, there's a large number of cameras that we're going to have to watch here because we're seeing more and more activity. So it looks like a large amount of fire activity. I'm glad somebody posted that in the chat. Can you measure that spot fire that is huge, the one moving towards Janesville? This is coming from ground heating up. I wonder if there's a carbon monoxide or sulfur in the area. Um, I can measure how f the distance that it took to get that spot fire. We measured this earlier, but again, it most likely started down here and then moved up to the northeast. The reason for that is because of those southwesterly winds. It's very unlikely that it started up here and then moved against the wind. So when we measure this, let's go right about here. We can imagine the burning embers picked up by the wind like that. And then it's dropped down into these critically dry fuels, probably right about there. And maybe three, five miles is a bit extreme for a spot fire, but possibly about three to five miles that spot fire had to cross in order to create that spot fire that is now moving into the Janesville area that we were actually just seeing on that live camera. So... That's the big story going on right now. We're going to continue to follow that over the next few hours. And just in case anybody, again, is new to the live chat, there are a large number of new evacuation orders in places like Janesville, pushing into Susanville as well. But the 
best thing that we can do right now is watch this update to see what they what Cal Fire is saying about the current situation because it certainly doesn't look like the situation is good. It looks like it's about as bad as we've seen on the Dixie Fire, minus maybe the at the peak of when the fire was moving into Greenville. Let's hope this doesn't turn into another one of those Greenville situations. So really want to watch this video to see what Cal Fire has to say. And throughout the course of this video, you can ask me questions in the live chat. I'll try my best to answer them. And it'll almost be kind of like an interactive viewing experience as we watch. About the, hopefully they mention that spot fire that's been moving into Janesville because that's, yeah, and the big, big part of the story that we're most interested in right now. Good evening, and welcome to the Dixie Fire West Zone Community Briefing. My name is Dan Olson, and I'm the Information Officer for CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3. I'd like to start this evening by giving you a brief summary of the current conditions in our state. Currently, over 10,000 federal, state, tribal, and local firefighters are assigned to 11 active, large wildfires within the state. Nearly 1.1 million acres have burned this year. That's an increase of over 234,000 acres versus the same time frame last year. Currently for the Dixie Fire, 578,897 acres have burned and the fire remains at 31% contained. It still remains as the second largest fire and 14th most destructive fire in our state's history. The current fire perimeter is approximately 500 miles, and this still is the same as walking from Susanville to Boise, Idaho. Currently assigned to this incident, we have over 5,963 personnel, 516 fire engines, 203 dozers, 103 hand crews, and 20 helicopters, as well as multiple fixed wing aircraft. The smoke still continues to linger over the fire and hinder our ability to fly, but when the opportunities present and the air becomes clear, our air's assets deliver drops to the identified areas. Additionally, our damage inspections teams continue to work throughout the course of the fire to identify the structures that have been damaged and destroyed. In Plumas County, 1,147 structures have been destroyed 76 damaged, and 1,498 have been identified with no damage. In Lassen County, three have been destroyed, zero damaged, and two with no damage. In Tehama, 30 structures have been identified as destroyed, five damaged, and 62 with no damage and saved. Overall, 1,180 structures have been destroyed on the Dixie Fire. 81 have sustained damage, and we continue to be happy to report that 1,562 have no damage and have been saved. Again, these inspections are ongoing, and the numbers are subject to change. In terms of impact locally, five counties have now been impacted by this fire. Butte, Tehama, Plumas, Lassen, and now Shasta. In regarding to the folks that have been affected, uh, as a result of this incident, over 28,000 residents are currently evacuated. 348 are staying in shelters, and we have established three temporary shelters in the area. We ask that you pay attention to and abide the evacuation orders that are being issued. There are many things that you can procrastinate on. Paying a cell phone bill, mowing the lawn, but evacuation warnings are not one of them. Please help us by taking care of yourself out of harm's way so that we can focus on fighting the fire. Now is the time to be ready. Don't wait until it's too late. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and get into our speaker introductions. For your first speaker tonight, incident meteorologist Joseph Godsworth. Thank you, Dan, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, once again, it is my pleasure to be here. And we're halfway through our wind event. We did see those winds pick up. We saw wind gusts anywhere between 15 and 25 miles an hour. Those really picked up once that air did clear. Now, the winds are going to settle down tonight. So we're going to see 
maybe a little bit more smoke come on in uh, during the overnight hours, but it looks like we're going to see those winds pick up once again late tomorrow morning and continuing for the majority of the day. Now, we've been sitting under this big area of high pressure for about a week now, but that's gone. It's been replaced by a dry cold front. And that dry cold front is going to work its way across the area tomorrow. And that's going to pick up our winds. So once that smoke does get on out of here by late morning, we're thinking, look for those southwest winds to pick up. We're thinking southwest winds around 15 to 30 miles an hour. And there could be gusts as high as 40 miles an hour, especially on the ridge tops and any part of the mountains that are exposed. Winds may be a little bit less in the valleys, but you're still going to have that wind channeled. And that could also uh, raise those wind speeds a little bit in those areas as well. It's not going to be quite as hot, but it is going to remain quite dry. So with that in mind, the National Weather Service offices nearby have issued a red flag warning for a good part of tomorrow, meaning we could see increased fire behavior and a critical fire weather pattern is in place. Now that dry cold front is going to go across the incident tomorrow afternoon, very late in the afternoon, probably more like early evening to mid evening. There's gonna be a wind shift to the Northwest. Eventually those winds are gonna turn around to the Northeast and those Northeast winds will continue through the remainder of the night. That'll keep the uh, wind speeds a bit on the elevated side, more than they usually have been at night, maybe say 10 to 20 miles an hour through the nighttime hours, and those northeast winds will stay in place during the day Wednesday, but we are going to cool down probably a good 10 degrees on Wednesday from what we're going to see tomorrow. So a quick summary, gusty northwest winds, excuse me, gusty southwest winds tomorrow, turning around to the northwest, and then eventually the northeast, and then hopefully things will quiet down starting Wednesday afternoon. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Joe. Our next speaker is fire behavior analyst Brian Newman. Okay, good evening. So across the fire today, because of this increase in wind speed that we saw and the uh, lifting of the smoke, we did see an increase in activity across the fire. Uh, starting over on the very western edge of the fire over in the uh, Morgan Fire area, uh, we had this is very, very steep terrain with very thick fuels out there. And so we had uh, material roll down the hills and allowed the fire to grow today, aided by that uh, fresh uh, wind coming in, increasing the wind speeds across there and increasing the fire behavior associated with it. So that uh, is progressing to the north and east up into the uh, towards the National Park area there. But uh, that's one of the areas that we saw some increase in activity today. Coming across into the main fire area near the uh, Warner Valley area, we saw some increase in activity there as well. But overall, a lot of that just stayed within the perimeter and continued going to the north and uh, progressing up towards uh, and into the park area, um, especially up towards the uh, top end of it and then the last end sector towards Highway 44. It did not get to Highway 44 today and it did not threaten the lines as much as uh, we had maybe anticipated. There was a lot of interior heat in here today that really uh, got some fresh wind on it and stood up and uh, made some big columns, but it, it burned intensely, but it didn't burn quickly. Uh, coming around into the in the Westwood sector towards the uh, area north of Westwood itself and north of Chester. Again, a lot of heat interior there, a lot of activity within the burn perimeter as that smoke lifted out and the wind got in there and uh, allowed it to uh, really get some activity going in there. We did see some spot fires that were thrown out to the uh, north and east, but uh, those were uh, uh, relatively short range spotting and they were able to be contained by the crews out there today. Uh, coming across over onto the Hamilton Mountain area, we saw quite a bit of activity in here because of the elevation, the thick, heavy fuels, and the uh, just the topography mixed with that uh, wind that really aided that fire growth today. So overall, the fire did make some progress, intense progress, but it is still west of Susanville and uh, is burning with intensity in this mountainous area here, but is not making any large runs currently. Uh, coming down a little further down to the south and the east, uh, the fire also uh, experienced some long-range spotting out in this area as that wind got in there and allowed the fire to pick up in an activity, large column that you probably saw from town, a pyrocumulus type of uh, development.
So I do actually just want to rewind that real quick because it's pretty crucial what he just said about Susanville right there. Key, key thing to think about here is that he said it's not making any large runs towards Susanville. That would be possibly some of the good news that we were hoping for. But again, we'll certainly continue to follow the hotspots and all the updates throughout the rest of this live stream as well just to see if that situation does change up there. But I do want to replay that to hear exactly what he was saying about Susanville. To the uh, north and east, but uh, those were uh, uh, relatively short-range spotting, and they were able to be contained by the crews out there today. Uh, coming across over onto the Hamilton Mountain area, we saw quite a bit of activity in here because of the elevation, the thick, heavy fuels, and the uh, just the topography mixed with that uh, wind that really aided that fire growth today. So overall, the fire did make some progress, intense progress, but it is still west of Susanville and uh, is burning with intensity in this mountainous area here, but is not making any large runs currently. Uh, coming down a little further down to the south and the east, uh, the fire also uh, experienced some long-range spotting out in this area as that wind got in there and allowed the fire to pick up in an activity, large column that you probably saw from town, a pyrocumulus type of uh, development, and allowed the fire to spot over into the uh, Thompson Pass area. Um, and I'll let our operations chief speak about the specifics of that fire specific itself, but uh, we did experience some long-range spotting because of that large column development over there. As we go through the night tonight, we expect it to calm down as the smoke settles back in and the wind starts to die down. But tomorrow, we can expect a very similar cycle in terms of fire activity with that increased wind that we're expecting to see similar to today. And so we expect a lot of the same areas that we saw activity today to experience activity tomorrow. Our next speaker is Operations Section Chief Mark Brunton. Good evening. So we had a very active day throughout the fire, and I'll just highlight a couple of the areas uh, that uh, we saw quite a bit of uh, activity today. So uh, throughout most of the Westwood sector on the western part, uh, pretty calm, uh, pretty static. Uh, so it, we didn't have much activity until we got uh, right here on the sector break between the Lassen sector and the uh, Westwood sector. Highway 36, uh, we're going to be in the process of uh, doing a burn operation to tie that in uh, before the adverse weather uh, winds uh, kick in uh, tomorrow. That'll seal this up so that'll provide uh, protection into the peninsula and west, the communities of Westwood. Uh, moving further east, uh, we've been continuing to work closely with our uh, partners uh, with uh, Instant Management Team 4 and now transitioning to Instant Management Team uh, 1. Uh, so surging resources, nothing too much of significance other than the work in the Duffy Group, uh, which is uh, paralleling Highway 36 just outside of Susanville, uh, opening up some of our control and uh, lines to uh, provide protection for that community with the anticipation of the winds uh, coming tomorrow. Uh, some buildup of the, the fire activity, is, uh, as uh, Chief Newman talked about, or FBAN, um, but uh, nothing making any sort of major runs or anything of that nature, but uh, we are prepared uh, to uh, take action as needed. Uh, where we are seeing some activity is uh, predominantly in the Janesville branch. Uh, as we speak, uh, we are uh, experiencing that uh, some spotting conditions that took place was about an hour ago, increase of those spots and the fire activity. Um, we are seeing that uh, in just, um, just south, basically, of Janesville 395. Uh, Cradle Valley is uh, one of the areas in roughly south and west of Clarks Creek. So got some spots established in there. We've surged resources. Uh, we already had a plan in place and, and stood up for structure defense of Janesville. So that's already been in play for a number of days, pre-planned. Uh, and uh, when expecting this kind of conditions, we've had resources there. As we saw the spotting, we've surged a number of resources. So we've, at this point in time, we've sent five strike teams of engines into that area, along with a number of our heavy equipment dozers. Our aircraft are working at the best they can. Uh, right now, the conditions are only warrant us to be able to work rotor wing, although it, as it opens up, we'll get some uh, fixed wing aircraft there. However, we are getting near the nighttime hours in which we cannot fly aircraft. So we're butting up against that, but we're throwing everything we can at that at this point in time. But we do have our uh, structure defense actively engaged uh, within the community. And then uh, basically evacuations have been uh, established for Milford. And then uh, just as uh, before I came up, uh, evacuations uh, into Janesville and further up. Um, so 
it's a dynamic situation, uh, one that we're going to be monitoring throughout the evening. We're surging our resources to that uh, as we have as part of our plan, and uh, we're, we'll continue to do so to make sure that that community is, is uh, rendered safe. Uh, as you heard from the IMET and if band that uh, we're going to have some of the wind subside a little bit tonight. So that'll help us jump on these, uh, these spot fires. Uh, and then, however, we're going to be ready for tomorrow where we are going to see a shift in uh, the pattern and we are expecting that increase, but we are prepared with our plans. We have a multi uh, phased uh, surge plan to surge resources wherever we need throughout the fire. So uh, we're prepared the best we can to take care of those needs. Moving into the north of 36 into our Lassen sector. Most activity uh, took place was from a lightning strike a number of days ago um, in the Morgan Spike area and uh, Highway 89, 36. Uh, yesterday got really active in the late afternoon and uh, started burning pretty actively. We instituted a, f a firing plan today that was been an all day event basically burning from the park down 89 and then hooking into the Highway 36 going down 36, and that has had success, and that is boxed in at this point, uh, that fire. Uh, so that is a good thing because we do not want it traveling to the west, into uh, Tehama County. With the winds, it will push it towards the park, and uh, although pushing fire is no, you know, in any direction is not ideal, but in this particular situation, it is a more ideal situation because it does put us into more favorable ground and fuels in which we can uh, actively fight the fire with more success. So that is a good win for us today, considering the circumstances. Within the park, we haven't seen any significant uh, fire activity or erratic fire activity. Uh, there is fire within there. We have plans that we've had in place throughout uh, the number of weeks. They're instituting those plans, putting those lines into play. And uh, so far, we're having success for our, our objectives within the park. And we will continue to do so as we continue to surge more resources in there. And, and we've got a good plan going there. Along the top in Division Romeo, we've had a lot of good success. Heavy mop-up, lines in play, uh, no factor with our wins. And so we've had good success there. Moving into Tango, that again also is into a mop-up, heavy mop-up situation. Did have a couple spots outside, able to pick up. But again, with these fuels as dry as they are, and with just even a little bit of heat, even further in uh, interior, they are uh, being pushed out by this wind event. So. We are uh, actively engaged in all suppression operations, whether it be active firefighting or into the mop-up stage. We are flying our aircraft when we have the opportunity to do so and utilizing that tool in our toolbox to achieve our objectives and uh, complete the mission. Thank you, Mark. Our next speaker is Federal Agency Representative Jay Lusher. Good evening. With the change in conditions and additional evacuations, the Bureau of Land Management would like to announce the closure of all BLM lands south of Highway 36, west of Highway 395, north... Alrighty, so now they're just getting to the closures, and since this is a pre-recorded video, I think it's actually more helpful just to look at any current evacuation warnings ourselves, just because I don't know when... It was posted 40 minutes ago, but I don't know exactly when... They were talking about those closures, and as we've been seeing on the evacuation maps, there have been closures, new ones coming in almost every single time that we look at this, just looking at their Facebook page itself. This is, again, the Lassen Modoc Facebook page. You can see 38 minutes ago, there it looks like there was another evacuation order being issued. So, again, when it comes to that kind of information, I think it is better that we just go over that kind of stuff ourselves given that they had a more recent evacuation order since when that video was posted. But I am glad that we watched that because they did say some very important things that we have been wondering throughout the entire course of this live stream. I think the key things that they were talking about had to do with this northeastern section of the fire. As of the time of them posting that video... It sounded like they were saying it wasn't making any significant runs in this northern section anymore, although we are still seeing a large amount of hotspot activity there. So that, I would hope, has continued over the last 40 minutes. Again, if 40 minutes ago they were saying there haven't been any significant runs in that area, then hopefully that has been holding as the winds are being reduced over the next couple of hours. But... I think the key area where we're going to have to continue to look 
Um, Holt looks extra close to Brokoff Meadows. Where's the evacuations? Um, so, again, large number of evacuation orders in place. There's the map. Let's make sure that's the most recent one. So you can just see the relative area where those evacuation orders are in place. You can see all of Janesville is in that evacuation order. That's the key one that we're going to be talking about throughout the course of this video. We're also going to be looking at some of the live cameras that show some of that fire activity. That actually looks like we can even see the spot fire that's finding its way into Janesville. And then when it comes to all those evacuation orders, you can go to three best sites, Cal Fire Butte County on Facebook, Plumas County Sheriff's Office, Cal Fire Lassen Modoc, or you can always go to the links in the description. I post all those links in the description. Good one to go to is Dixie Fire on Insaweb, and then go down to the bottom of the page, and it has related links, and it has all kinds of useful information where you can find out pretty much everything you need to know about this fire. The point of this video is for me to try to collect all that information and, and then be the middleman to try to put forward the most important things that we should be looking at. And again, I think the most important thing that we should be looking at is that northern section of the fire that appears to be getting closer towards Susanville. Again, in that video, Cal Fire said it wasn't making any more significant runs up there, but that was posted 40 minutes ago and we know a lot can change rapidly in the course of these wildfires so we will keep a close eye and see if those hotspots get updated any closer to the area of Susanville. I believe Susanville itself isn't completely in that evacuation order yet but honestly if I lived up there I would probably just be leaving as of right now just given how much activity that we are seeing when it comes to my feeling about wildfires, I always just try to trust my gut, and if it seems like things are not looking good, it's better just to pack up and get out of there. But where we do see those evacuation orders already in place is in that Janesville, Buntingville area. So what I want to do is actually check out the camera footage. See, that one's not showing too much right now, but we were seeing it on Alert Wildfire. This is the Indian Ridge camera, if we want to see where that camera is. Looks like this one is down looking up through the Taylorsville area. So let's turn it on. You can see it. This is a 15 minute run. You can see that activity on that ridge line up there. They zoom in at the very end, so we'll have to continue to watch that Indian Ridge camera as it looks like the activity is picking up right there. But the key one that, we're, that we were looking at for the spot fire that appears to be moving into Janesville started with an, I believe it was Schaefer Mountain right here. So let's go, let's go one hour because as right as it turns into nighttime or the camera goes into night vision, you can see lots of cars appear to be leaving on Highway 395 and then you can see where that spot fire is in the distance and where that fire activity appears to be moving into the Janesville area. So certainly not what we want to be seeing right now when it comes to our wildfires. Again, just to remind you what we're looking at right there appears to be this spot fire. You can see it's right on the western edge of Honey Lake right there. If we look at where that camera is pointed, you can see it's pointed directly towards the western edge of Honey Lake right there. Janesville is, does appear to be in the path of that camera, but then we also have Litchfield and Standish right there. Just playing it again, you can see that at about an hour ago we weren't seeing that fire, or maybe it just needed to shift over there. Just a small amount of fire activity, and then it does appear to be picking up over the last hour. Looks like, again, lots of people leaving because of the evacuation orders that are now in place. So this is certainly going to be a camera that we go back to throughout the entire course of this live stream. And wow, so since we, we were looking at this camera before we watched that Cal Fire update, and looking at it now, we're seeing much more of that fire activity than we were seeing earlier. 
So especially in, this is an hour long time lapse. It appears in the last 30 minutes, it's starting to flare up even more. So what I wanna see is if, I believe this updates automatically, but I wanna see if we force it to update. Looks like those heat signatures are the same. Sometimes this is the best way to see how that heat signature is doing. Let's go to the satellite imagery. Once it restarts, key thing I want you to look at is this northeastern section right here. You're going to be able to see the spot fire start right there, and then it starts to take off to the northeast. Again, that's mostly being fueled by the strong southwesterly winds we have continuing to push this fire farther to the northeast. And I mean, just looking at this map right here, that is, I would say, the worst that we've seen the conditions on the Dixie Fire, just given how large of a hot spot that is on the north, and then the fact that we had that spot fire in the exact place that we did not want a spot fire to happen. We've been talking about this area of the Dixie Fire for about a week now, and over and over again, we were following this, we'll turn on the fire perimeter here, we were following this, and the key thing we were talking about is how we had the sheep fire burn scar right here from 2020. And right there, you can see that kind of crisscross pattern shows you where the Dixie fire is. I could zoom out so you could see it better. And what we were talking about is as the Dixie fire moved up to that sheep fire burn scar, basically stopped in its tracks. You can see it almost looks like a puzzle piece right there because the sheep fire removed a lot of these fuels last year and then also you're able to reuse some of the con some of the previous containment lines but so because that sheep fire burn scar was right there the dixie fire basically split in two half of it went up north to go around the sheep fire to the north and then the other half started moving down first it moved directly to the east of that sheep fire burn scar and then we had a lot of activity down here throughout the day yesterday and then in the last five hours you can see the run that it has been making on that northern edge actually now going into that sheep fire burn scar so uh, it still kind of looks like it's going around if you actually look at the hot spots again looking at that you can see where the sheep fire burn scar stops right there and it looks like the hot spots are almost going around where that sheep fire burn scar is, which makes a lot of sense because that's exactly what the Dixie fire has been doing throughout its entire lifetime. When it gets into the sheep fire burn scar, a lot of the fuels have been reduced there, so it can't fuel as much future fire growth. But unfortunately, where we don't have that sheep fire burn scar on this northern edge is in direct alignment with those southwesterly winds. So right there, you see the burn scar stop, might be easier to see if I turn the hotspots off. You can see where that sheep fire burn scar stops. And then think about the southwesterly winds that we've had today continuing to push this fire farther to the northeast right there. As of that last CAL FIRE update that they said that there were no, sig no more significant runs on this northern section, but in my opinion, if I lived in the Susanville area, just seeing how much of a run it's made throughout the entire course of the day today, and given the fact that you basically have evacuation orders all around you, I would probably be getting my stuff ready to go, certainly listening to the fire scanner closely, and just given me, I I always believe in the better safe than sorry, I'd, I would probably just be leaving as of right now, because we have seen that large run throughout the course of today. But again, when it comes to that kind of information, always trust your local and your local resources and all anything like Cal Fire or you're finding on InsuWeb as well or any of the links in the description. So that is one of the key concerns right now that how that northern section has just gone right around the sheep fire burn scar. This is something we've been talking about for five or six days that we were saying Susanville sh should be in a pretty decent situation because they have this boundary between where we had a lot of that fire activity and where the actual town is. Maybe we could see it better if we look at the perimeter. So in my last update, those hotspots were actually down here. And we were saying that 
should be actually kind of nice for Susanville area because you have that protective boundary of the sheep fire burn scar, but you can see that the fire just moved directly around it and then started getting fueled by those southwesterly winds, pushing it farther up to the northeast. That's going to be an area that we have to watch very closely over the next 48 hours. And the area that we're watching the closest throughout the course of this video and the rest of this live stream is going to be this spot fire that appears to have moved into the Janesville, Buntingville areas right about there. That might actually be the first little indication of the spot fire right there. I'm not positive about this. It disappears if you zoom in too far. But there's the major blaze. You can see where all those hot spots were earlier. And then it almost looks like this little spot fire starts right here. I believe somebody on Twitter said the name of it. We'll have to go back to Twitter to figure out exactly what they're calling this spot fire. But since it was just that little spot, and then again, when I'm saying spot, it's because we had a lot of activity here. Burning embers are picked up in the smoke plume. You can see it on this map. If we zoom in here, you imagine burning embers are picked up, drop down right here, starts a spot fire, and then it continues to you can see the spot fire right there it continues to move up to the northeast and that little tiny dot right there appears to have turned into this large heat signature which is what we're following the closest throughout this live stream as it looks like it's getting close to the or into the Janesville and Buntingville areas so I see Lucy Anson thank you again for the super chat again I should be the one sending you super chats because of the great job that you're doing moderating this live chat, making sure that it stays very informative and helpful. Oh, interesting. So this other comment somebody post just posted, somebody said that the spot was actually a lightning strike that flared up. Don't know if that's for sure true. That could be true because we're looking at this on we're an update and forecast, I believe it was two or three days ago. When those thunderstorms came through, we actually tracked where those lightning strikes were, and there were a large amount of lightning strikes around the Dixie Fire, so it could be that that spot fire was a previous lightning strike. The reason I immediately just jumped to spot fire was because it's to the northeast of where we have all that activity right there, and it would just make sense if that large smoke plume was able to carry a burning ember and start that spot fire, but... I just want to get back to Lucy's comment. She said, go west if possible. And that is a good idea because we haven't looked at the McFarland fire in a long time. And this is another area that in Northern California where we have a very critical situation playing out as of right now. Looking at the, I always like looking at both maps because this one shows the cities better. It also shows that red flag warning, that's a key part of the story. You can see red flag warnings over the Monument Fire, over the northeastern section of the Dixie Fire, and that's actually for tomorrow, from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Tuesday. So I always try to look at silver linings and try to find some good news, but we've had a large amount of fire activity throughout the day today, more fire activity than I've seen on the Throughout the course of the Dixie Fire's lifetime, may it could be in contention with that one day that grew 15 miles in one day, but we have it appears we have even more critical conditions tomorrow as that red flag warning comes in. So we are going to have a lot to follow over the next 48 hours. So again, going back to the McFarland Fire here, you can see that large pyrocumulus cloud that was coming off of it earlier today and the reason this is such a key area to watch is because on this southeastern section where we have those hot spots you can see where Junction City is you can see where Weaverville is and then you can also see where Hay Fork is down to the southern edge now if we look at the Caltopo map I'll go on the perimeter just so you can see that it, this is the monument fire we're talking about we go to the live hotspots, it looks like those hotspots have moved into the Junction City area. So we're going to have to try to find some more recent information on that area. 
We, it also looks like some of those hotspots have moved into the Burnt Ranch area, so we have to find some recent information there. And then the big story, it ties into that red flag warning throughout the day tomorrow. We're going to have some 35 mile per hour wind gusts blowing in from the north tomorrow. So that's going to pose some danger for the Hay Fork area because we have a large amount of activity right on the southern edge of that fire. And with those northerly winds tomorrow, that's going to try to push that hotspot farther down into the Hay Fork area. Now the other area, again, Junction City and Weaverville as well. With all that activity we're seeing throughout the day today, that's going to be an area that we have to keep a close eye on. I wonder if they've done any updates here. It's always hard to find information about this one. Looks like it's officially over 100,000 acres, so that's a big update since the last time we looked at this fire. Let's see if they've done a good update here. Last night, Monument Fire was extremely active on all flanks, predominantly to the southeast. Um, this was posted 11 hours ago, so I'm actually not going to read that because you can see how much activity we've had in the last 8 hours so, or 11 hours. So whatever they're saying in that update is most likely different than what's currently going on where we see those large hotspots in the area. So we're just going to have to continue to try to find the most recent information there. Again, I put the links in the description for all these different InstaWeb pages. And the best thing to do is just go down here where it says related links. A lot of times there's great information down there about all the various fires. But next thing I want to do is just look at all the various live cameras we have going on. We'll replay this one. This is looking over the Janesville area to the west of Honey Lake where you can see what appears to be a large amount of cars leaving the area, evacuating on 395 as that fire activity appears to be moving in on the horizon. So I believe, I see in the live chat somebody posted, Daniel Firecopter just tweeted that the fire near Janesville is called the Farm Fire. He is showing Schaefer Mountain Cam with it. So this is the Schaefer Mountain Cam right here. And you can see that large amount of activity that appears to be picking up in the last hour. And before we look at more of these cameras, we are going to be looking at a lot of these cameras you can see Antelope Mountain. This is one we were looking at earlier. It looks directly over Susanville. And actually, I want to look at this one right now. Because earlier, it was hard to tell if what was off in the distance here was structures, the sun setting, or fire activity. So, I want to look at the last hour to see if we can answer that question. Because that's going to be, this will be a critical camera to continue to watch. When it comes to the possible dangerous situation developing in Susanville. It looks like that's some fire. I, I hate to say it because you can see how bright some of those structures seem to be as well. So it's hard to tell if that's actually fire activity. Or if that's. Uh, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say on that one. Dyer Mountain one. Let's check that one out as well. Oh wow, looks like there's a large amount of activity. We'll go full twelve hours. Let's see what it looked like throughout all day today. And while this is playing, it looks like it's mostly just smoky conditions. Can we recall recall the drought? It would be certainly nice if we could. About, I believe, 85% of California is in that extreme drought category. Seems like every time they update, there's more of California getting into that exceptional drought category. And that's a big reason for all the wildfires that we have going on right now. That it's critically dry fuels at the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Laboratory. We have been recording some of the the driest fuels that we've ever recorded. Again, we actually go up into the mountains. Oh, wow. This live camera. You can see that large smoke plume right there from the Dyer Mountain 1 camera. And then as we transition into night, you'll actually be able to see where that fire activity is a bit better than during day. Let's see if... 
I want to see if we can see that activity. It might be better on the 15 minute. Yeah, so large amount of fire activity picking up in the Dire Mountain area, and it almost looks like it's three different spots. It's right there, there, off in the distance there, down in the foreground here. So kind of sporadic fire behavior going on. And Trish, another great comment from... Actually, you know, Trish has been posting a lot of great comments. So just to make it easier on both Lucy and White Dove in the future, I'm going to add Trish as a moderator as well because you have been posting a lot of great ones. I'll try to keep my eye out for anybody else that I can add as a future moderator as well. Um... So I also notice people mentioning Twitter. That's always a great place to get information. And I do actually like to show my Twitter feed throughout these videos because I only follow wildfire accounts. So usually my Twitter feed is just a constant stream of the most important information. So that one right there, this photo is taken on 395, about seven miles south of Janesville. It would be interesting to see an actual photo from Janesville right now because it certainly looks like the fire activity has moved in there. So Daniel Firecopter, I believe somebody was mentioning this exact tweet in the live chat. So you can see, seems like the farm fire is heading straight, to straight towards for the Dixie fire. It looks to be up the hill on cams. There is extreme fire activity on the Dixie fire from the north to the east. That's uh, basically what we've been talking about throughout the course of this video. Zoom out a little bit. Caldor fire. That's um, not actually going to look into that one yet. I think we have enough to talk about when it comes to our various... Actually, I do want to see where that is because if that's a spot fire or something from the Dixie fire, that would be very important to look at. Let's see if it's on InsaWeb yet. So it looks like it's more in the center of California here. Looks like it's up to over 2,000 acres. But again, the developing situation is for the Dixie Fire, where, again, if you're just tuning in, we have large amount of evacuation orders around the Dixie Fire, Janesville area. Buntingville area looks like those evacuation orders are starting to work into the Susanville area as well. So very critical situation going on right now. Seems like every time we upload the Cal Fire Lassen Modoc unit page, there seems to be another evacuation order in place. So going to be very important for anybody who lives in these areas to stay updated with all the local resources. I try to put as many of those links as I can in my description. I'll try to find even more recent links and put them into the description before my next update and forecast video again tomorrow. But what we were looking at that was helpful was Twitter here. Um, right there, this is technically an update and forecast on all the various fires, so that is actually a perfect snapshot showing everything that's going on. Dixie Fire, 580,000 acres. McFarland Fire, 70,000 acres. Monument Fire... That was the big news today. It is now up over 100,000 acres. River Complex 44, Antelope 55, Caldor now on the list at 2,000. And then CA Fire Scanner. That's sometimes one of the best place, places to get recent information. Looks like there might be some new evacuation orders for the McFarland Fire. I'm sure there are some new evacuation orders for the Monument Fire as well. We're seeing both of those have a large amount of activity over the last five hours. And Dixie Fire, Plumas, radio traffic, quarter acre spot fire with slow rate of spread across US 395, just south of Honey Lake Rest Area. Additional resources from outside the incident have been dispatched with the address given. So fires cross the 395 again at Hicks Road. This is the spot or new start near Honey Lake. That's the question. Dixie Fire AA is reporting the fire south of Janesville is approximately 800 acres now. Still moderate to rapid rate of spread. 
and aircraft are now departing for the night. So that's a key. That's exactly why we go to Twitter to try to find recent information because that's exactly what we were interested in finding out about the Dixie fire over here, that spot fire on that northeastern section. Right now, or that was an hour ago that he posted that tweet, he said it's 800 acres and it had a rapid rate of spread. So if it was 800 acres an hour ago with rapid rate of spread, you can imagine it's even more now. And you can see how that hotspot has been going into the Janesville area. We we're actually looking at that on the Schaefer Mountain camera. Seems like every time we reload it, the fire activity seems to be picking up. So I don't want to be too repetitive, but when the situation is currently changing as fast as it is, you almost have to continue to keep re-uploading the exact same resources because it is telling us exactly what's going on. You can see, actually I'll pause this just so everybody can see that Let's go hybrid here. This is looking directly towards Janesville, right on the western edge of Honey Lake, which is directly where we have that spot fire right there. You can imagine the camera is probably right there, directly looking at the western edge of Honey Lake right there. So we can see that spot fire in real time if we look at the last hour. We'll press play. You'll be able to see that fire activity picking up over the last hour and a large number of people evacuating on highway 395 oh man so that is, that's why we keep re-uploading this page is because it seems like every time we upload it, we're seeing that hotspot grow and grow. And we're just going to have to continue to keep updating that because certainly, certainly it does not look good. You can see it, how small it appears to start. And then... Oh, it does look like the camera zoomed in a little bit, so that does make it seem even worse. So take that into account. It wasn't that the fire actually grew that much. It, your vision might be a little distorted because they did zoom in halfway through. But it does appear that there's a large amount of fire activity going on right on the western edge of Honey Lake area where we've been following that hotspot throughout the entire course of this video. Oh, notice how the power goes out on the Schaefer Mountain feed. See, that's why I love having the live chat. You guys notice things that I don't. So let's look at this again and see if we can see the power go out. So you can see what appears to be a lot of lights around here. Let's see if all those lights turn off at one point. Still looks like they're on right there. and looks pretty dark at that point so I wonder if that's right when the power was turned off looks like at the beginning of the video we had a large amount of lights where you still see some of those lights I think that's cars evacuating but you can certainly see that at the beginning of the video you have what appears to be a lot of structures and then I was I believe I was also reading a tweet at one point where they said that the power was being cut off So when it comes to that hotspot, I want to see what the winds are at right now because I really hope the winds have calmed down because the last time we looked at the winds, they were at about 35 mile per hour wind gusts. And if it's still that, then that fire is just going to continue to see that rapid rate of spread. Zooming in here, let's go right on the western edge where we're seeing that spot fire. That's the most important place to look right now. Man, still seeing 20 mile per hour wind gusts. So that's about as strong of winds as we typically see at maybe 3 or 4 in the afternoon when it's the peak of the windiest hours. But you can see we're still seeing 20 mile per hour winds right now. 
If you need some kind of good news, at least that's not as bad as it was at 4 p.m. where we had those 35 to even 40 mile per hour wind gusts coming through that started that spot fire. But the fact that we still have 20 mile per hour winds certainly isn't what we want to see. What I actually want to do, I want to look at actual observation stations because again, that is actually just using model information. It's the last model run. Uh, what's the link to the those live mountain cams? It is alertwildfire.com. I believe I put that link in the description. Um, but again, what I want to do when it comes to those winds that we're looking at right there, it appears that it's calmed down over the Dixie fire, which would be some good news. Not calmed down too much. We're still seeing 20 mile per hour gusts, which is more than we'd like. Looking at the model information, it looks like over the next two to five hours, they'll be calming down to about 10 mile per hour wind gusts, will, which will help to slow that rate of spread. But I want to actually look at the observation stations themselves not just the model data. Go to Mesonet. I'm very curious to see what the high temperature was today and I'm also very curious to see how windy it actually ended up being. So that is going to be a perfect station to look at because it looks like it's right in Janesville, right to the west of Honey Lake, right where we're seeing that hot spot. So that's going to be a key place to look at what kind of observations we had throughout the day today. So looking at it, we'll go down. First thing we'll look at is what the high temperature was. And that paints the picture of why we're seeing such extreme fire activity. You can see that high temperature today got up to 97 degrees. Relative humidity was in the single digits at about 8%. Now the gusts in this area look like they got up to about 15 to 18 miles per hour, but it makes sense that we're seeing such a rapid rate of spread. Temperatures today were in the mid 90s, and it looks like we're still at 82 degrees. And that was as of 9.59 p.m., still 82 degrees with 19% humidity. So by about 10 p.m., you'd usually like to be in the 60s with a 60% relative humidity, but you can see that's about as extreme of fire weather conditions as we sometimes see during the peak of the afternoon hours where you'd be seeing 82 degrees, 19% relative humidity and gusts at 13. So you can see why we still have that rapid rate of spread going on in that spot fire going into the Janesville area. It's because even though it's 10 o'clock, it's still 82 with relative humidity in the teens and gusts at 13 miles per hour. Now I'm interested to see a station to the southwest of there because that will paint a picture of what the winds were that caused that spot fire in the first place. So you can imagine spot fire came up right here so it was mostly caused by embers being picked up right around here. So let's see what this station's winds were at throughout the day today. And you can see why we were able to, we looked at that spot fire distance earlier. Again, I'm not 100% positive this was a spot fire, but just given its location and the fact that we had those strong southwesterly wind gusts throughout the day today, I would say it's pretty safe to say that was a spot fire. But if it is, it is going to be astounding because you look at the distance between those two. And I imagine it started right around here because then throughout the rest of the day it would have been fanned up to the north as those southwesterly winds continued to push it north into areas like Janesville. Most likely it didn't start up here and move against the wind. So when we look at this measuring tool to see how far of a spot fire distance that was, maybe three to five miles for those burning embers to be picked up by this smoke plume right here, picked up, thrown dropped into some critically dry fuels and then you can actually see that spot fire right there that's we can actually see that spot fire develop there's the hot spot right there you can think the burning embers picked up in the plume dropped into a spot fire then it grows rapidly to about 800 acres and that's what's currently threatening the area around Janesville so if we want to see what those wind gusts were 
that we're able to pick up those burning embers today, you can see we had gusts up to 31 miles per hour. Remember, the other day when we had all of that activity flaring up around Lake Almanor, which we certainly still do see a large amount of fire activity around Lake Almanor and south of Westwood. Haven't talked too much about those areas throughout the course of this video just because predominant wind direction is from the southwest, so it'll act to push that to the north instead of back towards those structures in Lake Almanor. But when we saw this area really flare up the other day, it's because those thunderstorms came through. And when they come through, or when they came through, they had some 35 mile per hour wind gusts that pushed this fire down to the south. And you can see that we had almost as strong of winds today as when we had those thunderstorms coming through. So it's not a surprise that we're able to get Again, I'm not confirming it was a spot fire yet, but it appears that that spot fire was able to come in about three to five miles away from where the major blaze was earlier. Now, one thing I will also say to back up that possible hypothesis that this is in fact a spot fire is the fact that a CAL FIRE representative was saying that in his 20 years of the service, he hasn't ever seen spotting distances as long as we've been seeing on the Dixie Fire. Big reason for that, you can kind of paint the picture if you look at the satellite imagery today. We have so much critically dry fuels that when the fire gets in there, you can see the large, large pyrocumulus clouds that are happening. And because we have those huge plumes, when the burning embers get in those plumes, they're able to be carried and it actually stays very hot in those plumes. So the burning embers remain on fire and then they're dropped and that has been a major factor on the Dixie Fire throughout the entire course of its lifetime. So again right there that confirms some of those strong winds that we had throughout the day today. And it looks like they should be calming down throughout the overnight hours. Certainly hope that they do. But the big story moving into tomorrow. God I almost hate to show this map right here but big story going into tomorrow is that we're actually going to have even stronger winds than we had throughout the day today. You can see those wind gusts getting up to 41 miles per hour tomorrow. And when they first come in, we're, they're going to come in from a northerly direction in the very upper parts of California, and eventually we'll see that shift in wind direction around the Dixie Fire. But into the early afternoon, they're still... Where are we? <laughs> They're still burning from a southwesterly direction, which certainly is not what we want to see when we have those current hotspots there and all of those structures right to the northeast of those hotspots. So looking at those winds coming in tomorrow afternoon, it is going to be crucial to follow this fire tomorrow afternoon as that red flag warning comes in. We're going to have 42 mile per hour winds with temperatures in the 80s still and humidity in the teens. But the big factor there is the wind gusts. That can lead to more spotting. That will lead to some rapid rate of spread. And we're certainly going to have to follow that closely as we do have that red flag warning in the area. If we actually want to see where that red flag warning is, I can zoom out on this map. Looks like much of the Dixie Fire is just in that fire weather watch. But you can see the area that we're the most concerned about, that northeastern section, is in that red flag warning, which is taking place from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Not a big surprise that they issued a red flag warning when you have relative humidity in the teens and 40 mile per hour wind gusts. Guarantee you're going to have critical fire danger. And I actually haven't defined red flag warning yet. This graphic, the Sacramento office always has great graphics for red flag warnings. Oh, they just have fire weather watch at this point, but impacts, easier fire starts, potential for rapid rate of spread. And you can see gusts 25 to 35 miles per hour, minimum humidity in the single digits and teens. So I hate to say it, but we've had some critical fire activity throughout the day today. And as you can see, the northeastern section of the Dixie Fire, the area that we're the most concerned about, is under that red flag warning from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. tomorrow. And unfortunately, it looks like McFarlane, Monument, and River Complex, all fires where we had a large of amount of activity throughout the day today. And we have been seeing some new evacuation orders in those places. 
those appear to be under that red flag warning as well. And we will certainly keep a close eye on those fires because going to be some critical conditions coming in over the next few days. So I see Trish posting another great comment. She said, Twitter CA fire scanner. So before I read the rest of your comment, I'm just going to check it out. We can pull it up so everyone can see exactly what the tweet was. CA fire scanner. And thanks again to everybody who's posting great comments in here about what cams to look at, what information is showing up on Twitter, or where the when the live stream is starting. So again, you guys help to make these videos what as you help make these videos much more informative because you you point me in the right direction. I'm almost kind of like a bowling ball just bouncing around and then you guys are almost the bumpers steering me and pointing me in what direction to look at. And then I just try to be the medium for all the information that we're finding out together. So we wanted to look at CA Fire Scanner here. Go back to the top. That one's about the Caldor Fire. Oh, wow. So Dixie Fire structure loss being, yeah, I think this is the one that Trish was talking about. Structure loss being reported in Janesville earlier. Earlier radio traffic wanted power shut off to the area as the fire moved in. So Dixie Fire structure loss being reported in the Janesville area. Earlier radio traffic, firefighters wanted power shut off to the area as the fire moves in. Taken from Highway 395 and Painter's Lane, several homes being lost. Dixie Fire. So let's make this video big and watch it again. So this appears to have been taken from Highway 395. Thank you very much for telling us to look at this tweet. This basically confirms everything that we've been talking about throughout the entire course of this live stream. Yeah, voice certainly is holding up a bit better tonight. I think it's because you guys keep reminding me to drink water. <laughs> and tomorrow night, I wasn't able to ready it for tonight, but tomorrow I will try to actually take somebody's advice. I forget who it was, but they commented that honey and lemon, good thing to drink as well, so I don't lose my voice. But back to the serious topic at hand, you can see that according to this tweet, Structures are being lost in the Janesville area. And, God, this is just so disappointing to see because this is exactly what we've been talking about for the last five or six days about how over and over again we kept talking about how it was this northeastern section of the fire that was the top concern because it was a part of the fire where almost every single day it seemed like we were getting large pyrocumulus clouds like that. And... The predominant wind direction in the afternoons is always in the south from the or almost always from the southwest and we saw these large structure areas like Susanville, Johnstonville, Janesville, Buntingville. So we kept talking about the fact that there was hot spots, southwest winds would continue to push it to the northeast, but it seemed like in all our videos it was well those hot spots are still ten miles away. Then it was those hotspots are eight miles away. And you can see if it was still just the major part of the Dixie Fire, we still would be about six miles away. But what ended up changing the situation completely was the fact that we were able to get that spot fire that then turned into its own fire that I forget what they were calling it. Somebody... Somebody said it in one of their tweets, and somebody said it in the live chat. I think I think it might have been Farm Fire. But you can see how that has been able to grow throughout the last 24 hours, or actually even less than that. We can see when this started. It certainly wasn't there earlier today. We have that large area right there, and then you see that spot fire pop up right there, and then it just takes off into the Janesville area. So... Very unfortunate to be seeing this video 
and the report that there has in fact been structure loss in the Janesville area. <laughs> brandy hot with lemon. I'm not sure how these videos would go if I was drinking brandy while I did it, but love the advice, Lucy, and also love the great moderating you've been doing throughout this whole video. So I also see this report. Um, fire radio firefighters expect the fire to burn along Highway 395 all the way to Milford, California overnight. Uh, what's the potential for this fire to roll on like this for weeks to months? What is the long range forecast? Um, that's kind of a it's a hard one to answer because you guys know me, I never like to be pessimistic. But given the critical state of our fuels right now, it looks like this is going to be a fire that continues for quite some time. So I I think to answer that question, I'll go back to the fire perimeter map for the Dixie fire. And I think this will basically answer the question. At one point, this fire perimeter stopped right about here, right, just almost parallel, almost in line with Lake Almanor, and then it stopped before Greenville as well. And we were feeling great about this fire, or we're there was a lot of confidence on it. There was some good structure protection. They had a firing operation that went all the way around the northern edge of this fire basically from Lake Almanor all the way to where my cursor is right here, they had burned out just miles and miles of fuel to basically be a boundary to keep that fire from going any farther north. And then we were fairly confident for, I remember it, it was one week, it was Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Dixie fire had barely grown at all. It, everything was staying within the containment lines. It was totally behaving. We had just some favorable conditions. It was cooler. We had a little higher relative humidity. And then all of a sudden, it started to get hotter. It started to get drier. We had some of those pockets within the Dixie Fire start to flare back up again. And then the winds came in, and it was able to take some of those burning embers that were flaring up, toss it over the firing line, over the containment lines, and then it grew 15 miles in one day. So to answer that question, I would say that it's hard to be confident about the Dixie Fire because at that point in time, everything was looking good. We had those very successful firing operations in place. But it almost just seems like it's... I usually don't like to use the word unprecedented, but it certainly seems like we're seeing some unprecedented behavior on the Dixie Fire where, like that run, it made 15 miles in one day. We're seeing spotting distances up to 3 to 4 miles. That one CAL FIRE representative said... He's seeing longer spotting distances than he's seen in his entire career. And unfortunately, the dry fuels are just going to get drier. I think best way to represent that is to go to the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Laboratory website. And you can see what our fuels have been doing over the last few months. So again, this might be a little much at first, but I'll try to try my best to explain what this chart is. At the Fire Weather Research Laboratory at San Jose State, we actually go up into the Santa Cruz Mountains and we trim plants into paint cans and then we weigh those paint cans, we put them in an oven, dry them out for 24 hours, and then we weigh them again. And basically as it's in the oven, all the moisture and water is evaporating from the plants. So based on the difference in weight, it tells you how much water and how much moisture was originally in that plant, and it tells you the fuel moisture. And that is the number one thing that's important when it comes to how much wildfires are going to spread, how bad are wildfires going to be. And this is the chart of the data over this last year. This data set goes back to about 2009. So to look at the average values for fuel moisture, you can see average values for this time of the year around 60% with, and it's shown in that green line right there. That red line 
was our previous record low fuel moisture values. And that blue line is the data that we've collected throughout this year. You can see record low fuel moistures throughout this entire year. And it just keeps going down over the last few months. And unfortunately, it's just going to continue to go down as we get through August. And then September is usually very warm as well. It doesn't look like the fuel moistures actually start to go up again until mid-November. So to finally answer that question, it looks like we're going to still have some very critical fire weather conditions until about mid-November. Now, one thing I want to do is go back to the Schaefer Mountain Cam because every time we update this, it looks like that hot spot right there on the western area of Honey Lake. And every time I update it, we have to look at it. So western edge of Honey Lake looking into Janesville right there. The hot spot that we're looking at is that hot spot we've been talking about throughout the entire course of this live stream. Right on the left shore of Honey Lake right there. The one that appears to be going into Janesville. And the one that on Twitter... Where did our Twitter go? There it is. The one on Twitter... Oh, Twitter is actually gone. Pulling up CA Fire Scanner. The one on Twitter where you could actually see where that hotspot is. You can see it on the ground. This is showing Highway 395. And that hotspot that has come into there with that fire activity. And if you look at the description it says structure loss being reported in the Janesville area earlier radio traffic firefighters want power shut off to the area as the fire moves in so if we want to look at the actual imagery of that hotspot we'll make it large and let's go one hour so we can see how it develops actually let's go farther back from one hour so you can see how it really started to pick up in intensity over the last three hours. So right there, it just looks like there's a large amount of smoke in the area. And then once it switches to night vision, you're able to see what appears to be that spot fire working its way into the Janesville area. And then in the more recent parts of this video, you can really see that fire activity picking up. So now that you've seen how it appears to be getting larger and larger over the last three hours, now let's just see what it's doing over the last one hour. Make it large. Big thing you notice is that the hotspot appears to be getting much larger and then there's also a point in this video where you can see all of the lights going off in the Janesville area where it does appear that they cut the power. So just going back to the start there. Lots of hotspot activity. And it just appears to be getting larger. And then the power looks like it was cut off to the Janesville area. So this is certainly a camera that we're going to have to continue to follow. Um, so Peggy Root, I see, just said, my property in Janesville Grand Road is gone. I don't know how to add photo. I have a video. Um, you could try to, uh, um, let's see. You could try to message it to me on Facebook. Pretty sure you can send videos over Facebook Messenger. And then I could try to pull that up. But I'm very sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to everybody who's been affected by these wildfires and God, this is literally exactly what we did not want to happen. We've been talking about this northeastern section of the Dixie Fire for about a week now. And it was that spot fire that came in today that really turned things around. Because we heard on the CAL FIRE update, actually, don't even know if I should say that. I'll, I'll just repeat it because it is true. We heard in the CAL FIRE update about two or three hours ago that 
They said this area around Susanville wasn't making any more significant runs, but the reason I was hesitant to say that is just based on how fast these fires are moving. I don't want to give anybody in Susanville a false sense of confidence. And if we go back to that evacuation map, you can see there are a large amount of evacuation orders all around that northeastern section of the Dixie Fire. New evacuation orders being issued seems like every time we updated the page. And I mean, it it is an individual choice when it comes to those evacuation orders. Not the orders themselves. Once the order is put in place, I would say 100% get out of there once you have an order. I would say it's an individual choice to leave before they issue that order. In my personal opinion, or and in actually what I have done in the past, is I personally don't wait for that evacuation order. If I start to feel it in my gut that things aren't looking good, I have in the past just packed up my stuff and left because there's not really much that you can help by staying and but again that is up to you until you get that order but once you do get the order then definitely leave and that does t give a good picture for why it's always important to stay up with all the most recent information So just looking back at the and thank you very much John for the super chat you guys have been incredibly generous throughout the entire course of this video one thing I also say is I know that there's ways to um, Donate to the fire victims as well. This actually reminds me of something that we haven't looked at throughout the course of this video. It's structure status. I want to see if there were any updates since we looked at this yesterday. Again, this is usually the best link to go to if you're worried about possibly one of... If you have a structure in the Dixie Fire area, what you can do is actually zoom in. The big areas where we saw a large amount of structure damage and destruction in the past was in the Canyon Dam area where you have those red structures. That's where it's destroyed. The black ones are no damage. Green ones are affected. Yellow, minor damage. The other place, probably don't need to tell you this, but where we saw a large amount of destruction was in the Greenville area. And one thing that you can do if you click the link in the description, you can actually go in here click on a house and it will actually show it to you so what we are hoping right now is that Janesville doesn't end up turning into another Greenville and I usually don't try to say things like that because I usually don't try to make any unnecessary fear but based on what the hotspot is doing right now and the conditions we have coming in tomorrow it certainly looks like a very challenging situation going into the northeastern section of the Dixie Fire. Going back to the live imagery here, you can see that spot fire, and you can see where those structures are. What I'm really hoping is that this isn't accurate. I'm hoping that the satellite imagery is just messing up because you can already see how many of those orange dots. I'll click them on and off so you can see where those structures are. You can see how many of those appear to be under that heat signature. One thing I will say is that sometimes we have seen in the past that sometimes these heat signatures are off, but usually not that far off. And it does look like there's a lot of activity there. And if we go back to this map, you can see how much that spot fire has grown throughout the day today. So you see where it starts, right about there. And then it just takes off to the northeast as it's fueled by those southwesterly winds around 35 to 40 miles, miles per hour throughout the day today. If we want to look at those winds that really caused what we're looking at right now, those southwesterly winds this afternoon... 
at about 38 miles per hour. We actually looked at some of the observation stations. There were 30 mile per hour winds, and then the Janesville area got up to 97 degrees today with relative humidity in the single digits, which is about as critical as fire weather conditions get. And the thing that I hate to show is going into tomorrow, we actually have even stronger winds coming in. Some winds up to 42 miles per hour with a red flag warning, not only over the Dixie fire, but over, not sure why it's not showing, there we go. So that red flag warning over the northeastern section of the Dixie fire, also the McFarland fire, Monument fire and river complex as well. Looks like antelope fire in that red flag too. And that goes from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. tomorrow. So we're going to have to watch that one closely as well. Um, I'm going to take another sip. So let's actually go back to Twitter. That's sometimes the best. Oh, that's also another place somebody can send me a video if you're trying to have a video played. I... I also don't really exactly know what's going on in the live chat. I haven't been too good at keeping up with it over the last maybe 20 minutes. But yeah, if you are in Janesville, I would leave immediately for sure. Let's go back to home or let's see notifications. See. Wow. So this is from Trisha. I wonder if that's the same Trisha who's now a moderator. Yeah, it does look like it. So thank you very much for posting that this video, Trisha. You've been just awesome throughout the entire course of this live stream. You, Lucy, and everybody who's also been commenting have certainly made this video great, but wow. So this is Janesville hashtag Dixie Fire. Yeah, you can see that fire really starting to come over the ridge line there. And unfortunately, that last update we were able to find on the fire moving into Janesville, they did say that it still had a rapid rate of spread, even though we were getting into the nighttime hours. Last time we looked at the winds, they were still blowing at about 20 miles per hour. And the last time we looked at the relative humidity, it was still in the teens. And our temperatures were still at 82 degrees. So we still have some almost afternoon-like conditions over Janesville right now as that fire is still moving in. So let's go to home and see. Oh, actually, I want to see what the other notifications were here. Yeah, so that's just proof right there. That's a great way to send me videos, and it definitely helps to be able to actually look at videos of what's happening on the ground. see this actually before we look at it let's look at what it's saying time lapse of Dixie fire at Janesville California near Honey Lake rest stop from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. oh and this is from Kira who is one of my fellow grad students at San Jose State and is on the fire weather research laboratory team they actually went up to this fire today I'd didn't go up to the fire because I was part of the fuel moisture crew that went into the Santa Cruz Mountains to get the recent data on the fuel moistures. So half our team was collecting fuel moisture data, half our team actually went to the Dixie Fire. But I'm actually glad that I didn't go to the Dixie Fire because if I did, I wouldn't have been able to do this update today. And I, it is always great seeing those comments from people that these kind of updates are helpful and informative. So. 
I'm glad that I was able to do this throughout the day today because it has been a very rapidly... Wow. As you can... <laughs> I was about to say it, but rapidly developing situation. And you can see it in that video where at the beginning of the video, there's no flames whatsoever. You maybe just see that smoke plume coming over the mountains. And then from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. today, you can see how that fire activity just comes right over the mountains. And I'm amazed that they stayed there that long. You can see what direction the wind's blowing. The smoke is coming straight towards us, which is usually what we do with our radar truck because you we point the radar truck at the smoke plume to collect data on how the wildfire is creating its own weather. And that is just an incredible video that Kira was able to take throughout the day today. Man, I haven't reached out to the rest of the fire team, but I'm going to need to to make sure that they're all good and safe because certainly seeing a lot of activity picking up right there and I'll retweet that right now let's see if the fire weather lab posted any other footage from the fire today so this is our radar truck that we take into fires and you can see how it's scanning the smoke plume right there and basically what we're doing is collecting data on the winds and how that smoke plume is moving because then we're able to incorporate it into our wildfire simulation model to be able to predict how the wildfire is going to move in the future because a big thing that drives how a wildfire moves is the weather that it actually creates so this radar is actually able to collect that kind of information and incorporate it into the model but man that's the fire weather research laboratory team right there There's another shot. So this is actually our other truck. This is our LiDAR truck. It does a very s similar thing as what we use our radar for. It's able to actually figure out how the wildfire is creating its own kind of weather and tracks how that smoke plume is moving as it is created. There's our radar truck again. You can see the difference in the pictures that our team was posting throughout the day today about six hours ago just looked like a moderately smoky day and then as we look at their most recent post you can see how the activity on the Dixie fire picked up throughout the day So let's just go back to CA Fire Scanner. Actually, first let's go back to the Facebook page. I want to see if there's any new evacuation orders. Oh, this is a new update from six minutes ago. This is going to be... I would say that the fact that they reposted or they posted another video from six minutes ago, I would say that's probably not a good sign.
So I'm interested to hear what they have to say. Good evening, and welcome to the Dixie Fire West Zone Community Briefing. My name is Dan Olson, and I'm the Information Officer for CAL FIRE Incident Management Team 3. I'd like to start this evening by giving you a brief summary of the current conditions in our state. Currently, over 10,000 federal, state, tribal, and local firefighters are assigned to 11 active, large wildfires within the state. Nearly 1.1 million acres have burned this year. That's an increase of over 234,000 acres versus the same time frame last year. Currently for the Dixie Fire, 578,897 acres have burned and the fire remains at 31% contained. It still remains as the second largest fire and 14th most destructive fire in our state's history. The current fire perimeter is approximately 500 miles, and this still is the same as walking from Susanville to Boise, Idaho. Currently assigned to this incident, we have over 5,963 personnel, 516 fire engines, 203 dozers, 103 hand crews, and 20 helicopters, as well as multiple fixed wing aircraft. The smoke still continues to linger over the fire and hinder our ability to fly, but when the opportunities present and the air becomes clear, our air assets deliver drops to the identified areas. Additionally, our damage inspections teams continue to work throughout the course of the fire to identify the structures that have been damaged and destroyed. In Plumas County, 1,147 structures have been destroyed. 76 damaged, and 1,498 have been identified with no damage. In Lassen County, three have been destroyed, zero damaged, and two with no damage. In Tehama, 30 structures have been identified as destroyed, five damaged, and 62 with no damage and saved. Overall, 1,180 structures have been destroyed on the Dixie Fire. 81 have sustained damage, and we continue to be happy to report that 1,562 have no damage and have been saved. Again, these inspections are ongoing, and the numbers are subject to change. In terms of impact locally, five counties have now been impacted by this fire. Butte, Tehama, Plumas, Lassen, and now Shasta. In regarding to the folks that have been affected, uh, as a result of this incident, over 28,000 residents are currently evacuated. 348 are staying in shelters, and we have established three temporary shelters in the area. We ask that you pay attention to and abide the evacuation orders that are being issued. There are many things that you can procrastinate on. Paying a cell phone bill, mowing the lawn, but evacuation warnings are not one of them. Please help us by taking care of yourself out of harm's way so that we can focus on fighting the fire. Now is the time to be ready. Don't wait until it's too late. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and get into our speaker introductions. For your first speaker tonight, Incident Meteorologist Joseph Godsworth. Thank you, Dan, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, once again, it is... All right, so there's that one key line of the update that tipped us off to the fact that I think they just reposted the same video that we watched earlier. So, I don't want to be replaying a video that was recorded hours ago because as we've seen throughout the entire course of this video, a lot has been changing in the last few hours. You could see that, I think, I think you could maybe see that best by looking at, again, I reposted this on my Twitter, at what has happened over the last two hours or just from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And they may have recorded that video before 8 to 9 p.m. So, again, I don't want to replay that. What I what I will show you is actually what this fire has looked like on the ground because you can see how rapidly it has been changing throughout the day today. 
You can see it starts out, it just looks like some pretty moderate smoke, and then all of a sudden the fire just starts taking off. And you see those flames coming down the hillside right there. And that's why I stopped that replay of the old briefing, because we've seen a lot of change over the last couple hours, just in the time that we've been doing this live stream. I want to make sure my live chat is live here for a second. So, actually, I am interested to see if they've posted the incident update for the Dixie Fire. That's usually one of the best places to find information. Oh, they have. Alright, so this is going to be, although this is again from 7 p.m. And too much has changed since 7 p.m. for I think that to still be relevant. So, I'm just going to go back to see a fire scanner, see if there's been anything new. Fireworld jumped 395 and lit the east side on fire. Scariest footage I've shot yet. Again, that's by Brett Forrest. Let's check it out. You can see that little fire whirl on the other side. Again, this happens when you have a lot of rising air from that heat being generated by the fire, and then the wind rushes in from different directions to fill that vacuum that's been created by the rising air. And then when it comes in at different speeds, then it just starts to rotate, and that's where you start to see that circulation and the formation of a fire whirl like that. You can also just see how high those flame lengths appear to be. I don't know how tall that tree is. You imagine that? Uh, it's kind of hard to judge how tall those flames are, but certainly look like they're tall. And I think... Yeah, a lot of activity going on right there. One thing I'm also going to have to do is at some point reach out to the San Jose State Fire Weather Research Team to make sure they're all good. Because based on the footage that they were reposting, it certainly looked like they were in an area that had a lot of fire activity. And then this is again the one we looked at earlier where it says structure loss being reported in Janesville area. Firefighters wanted power shut off to the area as the fire moved in. And then we have been mostly talking about just the Dixie fire throughout this video. We've been trying to talk about the McFarland and Monument as well. There, So that is a key thing to point out there. There are some evacuation updates with those fires as well. So it's going to be crucial to follow information in that area for McFarland, Monument, River Complex as well. You can see on that satellite imagery throughout the day today, we did have a large amount of activity there. Now, going back here, I want to see if this has been updated. Again, I'd say if we need to grasp at some kind of good news, we haven't seen more hotspots showing up on the northeastern section right here for Susanville. With that being said though, again there might be so much smoke right now that the satellite imagery isn't able to get through that thick smoke plume to figure out if there are hotspots there. So I think the key thing to think about if you're from Susanville, 
is looking at this evacuation map, it goes basically right up to you. And if it was me in Susanville, I would I would probably just leave right now because you're most likely going to have to leave tomorrow anyway, based on the fire weather forecast coming in tomorrow where, where it's going to be even windier and we have that red flag warning coming in. So you might as well leave earlier than later. Better safe than sorry and don't really have a choice anymore in the Janesville area where that evacuation order has been put in place. Reason for that is that spot fire that came up here. That's the big thing we've been following throughout the whole course of this video. I'll restart this. I want to see what this hotspot has looked like in the last hour. You can see power shut off in Janesville at this point. And that spot fire coming down the ridge line. You can see how much fire activity we're still seeing on that. Last report we saw said it was still seeing a rapid rate of spread. And based on how fast some of that smoke is moving too, you can see that we do still have some gusty winds. Last time we looked at the winds, they were still blowing at about 20 miles per hour. So that's going to be an area that we're going to continue to have to follow. Looks like Indian Ridge. Check out this camera as well over the last hour. Wow, looks like a lot of activity on that Indian Ridge camera. I would like to see what this is exactly pointing at. So it looks like it's pointing up in that same direction as that hot spot that popped up there. Thank you very much for the super chat. And I'll, that actually just reminded me that I haven't been doing a very good job at looking at the live chat recently. So apologies for that, but trying to think about where we can find the most recent information. I think what I'll do right now is take a good sip of water and I'll try to give a concise update on the most important things that we need to know. The Dixie fire throughout the day today, you can see the large amount of activity that we had. Four just very large pyrocumulus clouds coming off. And the most important part of the Dixie fire update and forecast throughout the day today, this is the best way to see it. You can see where we had that hot spot, where it's been burning over the last few days, started a spot fire. That spot fire has grown to more than a thousand acres at this point, and it has officially moved into Janesville. So that is the big news that is developing right now. If you look at the evacuation orders, Janesville is now under that ev evacuation order. Looks like the northern edge of the fire has been making a very large run over the last 12 hours as well, getting up closer towards Susanville. You can see where, while we were counting on the sheep fire to protect Susanville from the Dixie fire that was down here. It looks like it just moved up to the north of the sheep fire and has just taken off to the north right there, getting closer to Susanville. So that is an area where if I personally live there, I would probably just evacuate now because given the fire weather forecast, you're most likely just going to have to evacuate tomorrow anyway. But official evacuation order in that Janesville area, right to the west of Honey Lake, where we saw that hotspot pop up earlier today and as of right now it, it looks like much of that hotspot is over those structures and we were already seeing reports on Twitter that there that there has been destruction and I'll go back to my profile I believe I retweeted it there has been destruction no it was CA fire scanner so there has been some structures destroyed in the Greensville area, we had that video of a fire whirl we were looking at earlier, 
And this is the tweet that we want to see. Structure loss being reported in the Janesville area. Earlier rate of traffic. Firefighters want to power shut off to the area as the fire moves in. And you can see that this, I believe, is Highway 395. And I'll make it big so we could watch it again. Where that fire and that spot fire has moved into Janesville. And that evacuation order is in place. You can see how fast those embers are going. So we still have some winds. Last time we looked at the observations for the weather up in Janesville, it was still, as at 10 p.m., it was still 82 degrees with 19% relative humidity and 13 mile per hour wind gusts. So fire weather conditions that we would be seeing in the afternoon hours, we're still seeing during the nighttime hours. So most likely going to continue to see some fire activity as that fire burns into the Janesville area. What I'm hoping is that they're able to get some good containment on it, and it doesn't turn into another Greenville situation. But even more, what I'm hoping is that everybody in this area was able to get the evacuation order and was able to get out safely. Because last I checked, we still had zero deaths on the Dixie Fire, certainly knocking on wood there. But it does look like a very challenging situation developing in the overnight hours as of right now. Now, when it comes to the Dixie Fire, you can see that we are up to about 580,000 acres and we're just going to have to continue to follow that one closely over the next couple of days because there are some very challenging weather conditions coming in. And we're also going to have to follow the other wildfires in California closely because we're actually, I, I wasn't able to cover them as much as I'd like in this video because we we're focusing so much on the Dixie Fire, but McFarland Fire has some new evacuation orders. The Monument fire looks like it's getting dangerously close to Junction City and we're going to have a, no a northerly wind event tomorrow which will continue to push that fire farther down to the south into areas like Hayfork. So definitely going to have to watch those closely tomorrow and the reason that I'm so worried about the forecast for tomorrow is you can see if we zoom out here over the McFarland fire, the Monument fire, the River Complex, the Antelope fire, and the Dixie fire, we have that fire weather watch and that red flag warning. And the reason for that has to do with the fire weather forecast. You can see that over the last few days, we had that high pressure system over us. That was what was keeping the temperatures so warm going into Sunday. That high pressure system peaked. And then what drove all of that fire activity today is this trough and this low pressure system starting to push into the Pacific Northwest that brought some stronger wind gusts and you see mostly from a southwesterly direction at this point that's why most of our growth throughout the day today was to the northeast because those southwesterly winds came in at about 35 miles per hour and just continued to push that fire further towards the northeast as we saw caused that spot fire as well that has now moved into the Janesville area and the big news is that as that trough continues to come in, you can see tomorrow, because of that counterclockwise circulation, we're going to switch to more northerly winds. And the winds are actually going to be picking up as well. If we look at the forecast for the winds tomorrow, you can see that they're actually going to be up above 40 miles per hour. And at first, they're still from that southwesterly direction. So that's going to be very challenging conditions for all the areas of the fire that have been continuing to grow to the northwest or the northeast and then eventually as we get later into tomorrow you can see that northerly wind event comes in so that's also going to pose some challenges to firefighters because it's going to have to shift up the strategy as the direction that fire is moving changes rapidly key area that i'm going to be focusing on more tomorrow night that I wasn't focusing on as much tonight is this area around the shore of Lake Almanor as those northerly winds start to push in as you can see on this map that they will be doing that'll be about 11 p.m. tomorrow we have those 25 mile per hour gusts to the north shore of Lake Almanor so we'll have to keep a close eye on that area to make sure that that hot spot doesn't move farther down to the south but key thing that is the big story right now is the fact that that hot spire hotspot has moved into Janesville based on the imagery that we are looking at it looks like there is a large amount of fire activity into Janesville based on the live cameras we're looking at it looks like it continues to grow with a rapid rate of spread as it moves closer and 
through the town. So going to have to keep a very close eye on that tomorrow and a very close eye on the overall forecast as we get into tomorrow because, like I said, with that red flag warning, that basically, to sum up a red flag warning, it means that there are going to be critical fire weather conditions, potential for rapid rate of sped, and the potential for new fire starts. So we will take a close look at that tomorrow, but about three and I think it says about three and a half hours in at this point, maybe two and a half, I'm not totally sure. But I do want to save something for tomorrow because I hate to say it just because of how critical the situation has been tonight and all of that that hotspot activity moving into Janesville, most likely losing maybe hundreds of structures throughout Janesville right now. Unfortunately, this isn't over. We have that red flag event tomorrow, and we're going to have even stronger winds to deal with, with some gusts up over 40 miles per hour. So do you want to save something for tomorrow? I will be back, and I will be here throughout the rest of the wildfire season. Actually, not just this season, probably for the next... I don't know, maybe maybe 25 to 50 years I will be doing these wildfire updates, so you can subscribe to this channel if you want to stay updated. Huge thank you to our moderators tonight. Huge thank you to everyone who's been posting all the great suggestions for live live images to look at and all the other great questions and comments you guys have been posting. You definitely helped to make this video better. Last thing I will say before I go is large amount of evacuation orders in place. Stay updated with the local resources. I put a lot of those links in the description. And if you get an evacuation order, I would leave immediately. And even if you don't get an evacuation order, if your gut tells you to leave, it's most likely time to leave. So I hope this video was helpful. I will be back again tomorrow. And thanks for watching.